Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Super Old Game Saturday, the retro show I put on every Saturday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for classic gaming goodness. But back to me just alone tonight, uh, the Crusader 64 was on the show for the past three weeks, and he'll be back again if you liked his uh, plays on December 3rd for uh, Part 3 of Shadow Hearts. Tonight we are playing Streets of Rage 2 for the Sega Genesis, and you're wondering, uh, the past couple of weeks when I said we we're going to do this game, and a game that shuffled around the schedule. First we we're going to do it in September, then August, then December, and now on November 12th. But I said that whole time, I said we're going to use the original Genesis cartridge, but I'm not using that. I'm using the uh, Genesis Mini 1. It is worth uh, differentiating that now we have the Genesis Mini 2 that is not as good as the first. I will say that again as we go, but probably wondering uh, why are we doing that? Well, before we start this, I do want to kind of give a little bit of an explanation as to why this is. Uh, I've been practicing this game all week, just to get a set of, but actually, on my work break, using the Switch Online Expansion Pack version, but I said we're going to use the Genesis cartridge, but when I came home at the end of the week uh, to test this, to make sure that everything was going to go on the form factor, I realized that the game was not coming up. It was showing a red box whenever I turned the cartridge on. I cleaned it out with isopropyl alcohol, I went out and bought pressurized air, two cans worth, sprayed that shit all over my 32X Genesis Model 1 and Sega CD Tower of Fails, it was called uh, in college by people. Nothing. And it wasn't that, I mean, it wasn't just that game that was doing it, but there were also games on Genesis that were running fine through that. So I don't know if it's hardware problems as far as my setup. But I can't use the Genesis cartridge. Actually, I have the Genesis cartridge propped up on top of my uh, Model 1 uh, Genesis Mini, as it is now. So we're going to have to use this. And I guess I'll have to figure what I'm going to do about that, especially if I run into cases where it's not a game I don't have somewhere else. And that's why I'm going to be able to use this. Okay, what version should I use? I even put this to my coworkers yesterday, saying, I'm having this problem, what can I do, and what version you want to see? They said, we don't know this game well enough like you do, so... Uh, take your pick. Yeah, I had eight other choices, because I have nine copies of this game, technically, if you count the Genesis version and all the collection I have it on. So, I decided Genesis Mini 1, but I'm using the Genesis Mini 2 controller. Uh, you can't see it out there, but I do have the six-button controller from that. It does work on the Genesis Mini 1, if you have it. Not that it's going to matter for this game, because this game doesn't use it. That's going to be its sequel, uh, Streets of Rage 3, which, by the way, we will not be using the Genesis Mini 2 for reasons I'll get into later in the show. Or that I mentioned also when we played Shadow Hearts for Part 1. But I just want to give a little bit of an explanation as to why that was. And like, hey, I wanted to at least get as close to the original as I could. And it's probably going to be for the best anyway, because it gives me an option to also go play the Japanese version. Which I think I'll probably do, because this game is pretty short, unless I run into trouble playing it. Or feasibly, I could pick the other beat-em-ups to show off a little bit, like Comic Zone and Golden Axe. But I think we'll probably stick with Streets Rage 2, because, yeah, this is a game we're celebrating. I want to at least bring this to you as best as I can. Oh, I guess the Genesis cartridge might not have been the best way, but it was the original way. It's the only one I actually have the original form factor of. Actually, the next time we play a Streets of Rage game where it's going to be on the system it originated, will not be until we do Streets of Rage 4 for the Switch. But I'll come a bit down the road. All right, let's get started with Streets of Rage 2 then, which did come out on December 20th, 1992 for the Sega Genesis. It came out in 1993 in Japan and in Europe, surprisingly. Uh, this is the sequel to the game we played last year, Streets of Rage 1, that has four fighters that are going to be rescuing uh, Adam Hunter from the first game from the Syndicate. Uh, Mr. X is back. He has a lot of bad guys causing crime in the streets of the city, and Yuzuki shares the great soundtrack. We're going to be running that. Let's get going. Yeah, this came out on Sega Genesis. It is a terrific, terrific game. Might be the pinnacle of the Streets of Rage franchise, was saying something. Hmm. There's a lot of really great entries in this series. But yeah, we're getting the story call with this amazing music. Again, I cannot speak highly enough of the soundtrack, which, like last time, was done by Yuzo Koshiro, who did the music for Revenge of Shinobi, as well as the Sharp X68 version of Bosconian, Actraiser, Yadawasis, and also, actually, he did do a Castlevania game, as being the, uh, X uh, the uh, X68000, remember that. That's the computer, by the way, that, that Castlevania remake that was in Castlevania Chronicles is in. Yeah, he did the music for, involved the music for Castlevania Portrayon on the DS, as well as Car Battle Joe on the Game Boy Advance, which is a rare one from his company, um, Ancient, that I have on the Wii U's Virtual Console. We will show that, actually, in about a month with uh, the next beat-em-up we're doing, which is going to be uh, Final Fight 3, because we're going back and forth with these franchises. Uh, between Sega and Capcom's Elman, and tonight is back to Sega. 
and we're going to have a great time as you hear this wonderful music getting us ready for a night of pugilistic joy that you're also going to probably want to get up and dance to. Or if you're anywhere or you're having a party with people, this might be one of those. Yes, put this music on, get that party raving, and if people don't know this is coming out of a video game, yeah, they'll be surprised to hear that and they'll say, like, yeah, I don't mind that. Because this is a great game. As I said, it also is on a lot of systems, so if, like me, you can't play the original cartridge version, you are a star for choice for places you can play this. There was also a Game Gear version of this around the same time that it came out on Genesis and also the Sega Master, but this version itself, it is the most ported uh, Streets of Rage game of all four of them. Because, as I said, of the versions I have, a third of those nine I own are on the Xbox 360. Because there's an Xbox Live Arcade version, there's a Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection that has it, there is the SVC Streets of Rage collection, which we're going to use to play Streets of Rage 3. And, uh, yeah, we're getting in the demo while seeing uh, Axel punching as we go along. Uh, let's see, what else has this thing been on? It's been on the PS4, the PS5, the Switch, the PC, the 3DS. Uh, the Wii Virtual Console was on, uh, it, when you could download stuff off of that. It's on the PS2 and the GameCube in Japan, because as I mentioned, we played, uh, the first one last year. In the 2000s, Sega was ashamed of this franchise, and they really shouldn't have been. Because the only port that we saw... Well, fine, there are only two ports in the 2000s, which are the one on the Dreamcast in the Sega Smash Pack Volume 1, which is horrible. But for a while, it was the only, uh, version of the game I owned. And the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, which is on PS3 and Xbox 360. But yeah, the PS2 and GameCube got this within Sonic Gems Collection in Japan only, whereas for the US, we got Vector Man 1 and 2, and I think we were worse off for it, because, with all due respect to Vector Man, yeah, the Streets of Rage games are so much better. And, uh, yeah, tonight I'm gonna show you why on the second one. This is probably my favorite one, and like Streets of Rage 1, I also have personal connections with this game, for sure. I grew up, and as I mentioned last time, I had, or for the first game anyway, one of my cousins was visiting and we rented the Sega CD unit that had that version, which we used uh, for the previous play for that game, which uh, I have a link, I'll have a link of that one below if you missed it, because that was a great time we had playing Streets of Rage 1. Yeah, he was the one who pretty much played up to round 8, almost got to the end, like me, probably got a game over right near the end. And uh, with Streets of Rage 2, it was kind of similar. I had other cousins as well who had this. I saw them play, I didn't play it that massively, but I did like what I saw, and then when I got that Sega Smash Pack Volume 1, it's a horrible port of this in regards to its uh, technical reasons, the slowdown and uh, graphical flicker, and big problems with its audio. But that being said, it still is a fun game, and... As I mentioned, they definitely enhanced a lot over Streets of Rage 1, which is a great game already, but they're running 4 megabits as far as the first game. This one is running on 16, so it's a quadruple the size, and with that quadruple size, they gave us more in regards to its great music, graphics, and gameplay. Alright, so let's get started with as far as what we're going to be running here. Yeah, you have options of easy, normal, hard, hardest, and there is a code you can put in to have Mania, which is insanely hard. Uh, I'm going to run normal for this. You have a selection of lives, that's what players is. You can set it to one, you can set it to five. I'm gonna be somewhere in the middle. They default you to three, I'm gonna run to four. You also do sound test of uh, music, sound effects, and voice samples. And like with Streets of Rage 1, if I get a game over near the end of this, which might happen, maybe not as likely as with Streets of Rage 1, because this is a little, a little easier. I do have that second controller plugged in so we can put a code in, which is actually really easy. All you need to do for that, just to give you an idea, is you press the A and B buttons, hold them down on the second controller, and then select options with controller 1, and you have a round select added there. You also have dual mode, I will show that off later, just for reference of it, and you can do this with two players or one, we're running one. Alright, so, as mentioned, the story of this game, hmm, is that Adam Hunter, who we saw last game, and who I let get beaten up in the factory in round 6, after we took care of Mr. X and the Syndicate last time, Axel and Blaze decided, yeah, we're getting out of the city. Axel decided to be doing uh, martial arts training. Blaze, who in the uh, opening of the first game said she did Lombada, she started teaching it. It's her new gig. And they came into the city the year after to meet up with Adam, have a great time, celebrate everything that was going on. But the next day, Adam was kidnapped by Mr. X and his brother, Eddie, Sk Eddie or uh, as he's known, Skate. Realized, yeah, my brother's kidnapped, I need help, and went to Axel and Blaze, knew that of his, their great adventures uh, in the first game. And then Axel's wrestling friend, Max Thunder, who in the European version was actually named a bit differently. He was named uh, Hatchet, 
Well, fine. They added the element of Hatchet as far as his nickname. But yeah, it's Max Thunder is who he is now. He's a wrestler, and you do have the selection of four characters who do have their different attributes. We'll go through them really quickly before we start this. Yeah, Max is very, very slow and has low jump. Not that the jump is really going to mean much, admittedly, in this game. But he has a lot of power, and I guess he has stamina, but I don't know if that affects his health bar. It might, it might not. Not, I don't know necessarily, but I guess we'll see, because I'm going to show off every character to start eventually. Well, not either to, not to start, but I'll eventually show off all the characters. Axel Stone, who was in the last game, he's pretty middle of the road. He has a uh, pretty average, a pretty good technique as far as it was. All the stars, by the way, go from one to three. He uh, moves at a decent pace. His jump is a bit low, but he does have some good techniques as far as fighting. Blaze is in the middle as far as everything. She's definitely uh, pretty good as far as that. I tend to play with her, and I'm going to start with her. But then you also have Skate, who's not very powerful or strong, because, yeah, he is a kid, after all. But he has the strongest jump, and he has the fastest speed, and he also has uh, dashing. He's the only character in this game who can do that, and until Streets of Rage 3, this is your only way to do a dash in the Streets of Rage element. In that, in that game, you double tap to do the run, as Skate just has that for the purpose of this. But we could start on this great game. We take Blaze out, and we see her in the red outfit. We're not going to see her in the red outfit in the next game. Well, okay, not in the U.S. version, we're not, because uh, in that case, we've been playing that game twice. Same deal with uh, this one, I guess, because of how we're running it, but let's get going. There's definitely a lot of changes that happen. You're going to notice this as we start on stage one in downtown, and we hear Go Straight, which is a great piece of music. Here, that dig it, 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 Same deal as before. Start running around beating people up. Uh, B button is your attack as before. A button is your special, but it's different this time. Instead of having the police come out, there's actually a lore reason for that, because after uh, the Syndicate came back and Mr. X took control again, he said, you know, uh, I'm going to just fire everybody in the police force, so everybody's going to run for me now. The police, who were our friends, are not around, so they can't help. So, you hit the A button, you do a flip there. That is your special move. It is different for each character. And for Blaze, you also have another thing. It will not do damage if you do the standalone one and don't hit anything, but as soon as you hit something, it does hurt. But if you get close and hit the uh, forward and hit the A button, you'll do that. And it's called the... Uh, what's the name? I have the name of what's called the... Kosho! Because I was wondering, like, what does she say when you do that? Also, you hit uh, double tap B, double tap uh, forward and the B button, you do that slice, which is their special move, or another special move that does not take off uh, power. So you can use it to your advantage. Hello, everyone. Hello, Dolly Finn. Good evening to you. Uh, we're playing Streets of Rage 2 tonight. We were Streets of Rage 1 last year that we played. We're playing a sequel. Unfortunately, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I cannot play the Genesis version. My Genesis cartridge copy is not working, so I said, fine. Uh, Genesis Mini for this baby, and I do have my Genesis cartridge on the top of my Genesis Mini. I'll probably put a picture here to show that, you know what, I can't use that for tonight, but I'm gonna have it replicated somehow. And, uh, hope you're doing well, and hope you're doing well also to Electverse. Hey, everybody, so good to see you tonight for Streets of Rage 2. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Seems like I'm getting a good, uh, number of people so far for this one. Thank you for showing up for the show tonight. Let us know any of your memories for Streets of Rage 2 or any elements of beat-em-ups as we go back to Sega's uh, element of this against Final Fight. And we are doing the next Final Fight game, by the way, in a couple of weeks. Actually, five weeks. This is Final Fight 3. So yeah, in the meantime, we're just going through hearing the great music of Yuzo Kishiro's mention and just beating everybody up, and it's so much fun. Let's pick up uh, weapons again. Get the pipe, which uh, hurts badly like before, and you also pick up some items for money for points. Every 20,000 gets you life, and then apples for health. Other thing to keep in mind, when you do a run of walking into uh, enemies with your weapon, you do drop it. And uh, three drops of the weapon is gone, so be careful on that. Hopefully you watch tonight's shows fully this time. Oh, uh, that's fine, don't worry about it. As I said, uh, like for the show is going to be always there as far as the YouTube site upload, but hope you are able to join the show or be on the show as well tonight, for sure. We do appreciate you being here as it is, and we'll definitely have a lot of stuff going into with this. And I guess other things on my mind as far as gaming and other things about, um, I guess elements of pop culture that have been going on recently. Other stuff with Sega, we'll talk about the Sega Genesis Mini 2 a little bit more, because I have more of a reason to do it. And I am using its controller, the six-button controller that came with it. It does work with the Mini 2, or the Mini 1 that I have to use for this, because my Genesis does not work, or this one. Was this ever an arcade game? Uh, technically, yes, it was, actually. Um, there was the Mega Play, which was a... Kind of a standalone unit of sorts, kind of like the PlayChoice 10 that Nintendo had, where they basically were all getting it so that you could have console games in it, but this was a uh, console game specific, unlike Final Fight, or even Final Fight, only the first one was. I switched my T-Mobile internet for the purpose of this. Yeah, there you go, that's uh, 
Actually, that's for my uh, cell stuff. But that's the idea of what it is, but hopefully it is more uh, stable. I mean, I've run into that with the show before myself. It's like, hey, I'm doing the recording, and, you know, it may stutter or something, so I have to hardwire it into my files connection, which I actually updated a bit uh, earlier this year as we're defeating Jack. He's drive dropping knives, so just keep beating him as we're going to the bar. You do have transitions in stages, which you didn't have in Streets of, Streets of Rage 1. Uh, thank you, by the way, uh, Dolly Finn says. Uh, you're welcome, as far as the arcade thing. Yeah, because as I was saying before, there are tons and tons and tons of ports of this thing. So many so that, even though I couldn't use the Genesis cartridge because it wasn't working in my 32X uh, Sega CD Genesis Model 1 setup, I have uh, eight other versions. I can play those. And I said the best one as far as porting is this one. Also, I did avoid getting myself hurt from the throw. Hit up and the C button, which is your jump button, by the way. As you land, you cannot take damage. But you have to be timing that right the same way that you did in Streets of Rage 1. I believe 3 does have that as well. We'll get to 3 eventually. And Medics is going to be with me when we do Streets of Rage 3. And we are going to be using the SVC Streets of Rage collection on the Xbox 360 for the run of that. Isn't Mega Play Cabinet a modified Sega Genesis, or am I wrong about that? Uh, you're correct, like, first it is. In fact, um, as far as what that is, it's, it sort of is. There are a couple of differences with it. It's like the PlayChoice 10 of Nintendos. I've actually never seen the, uh, Mega Play unit around. Actually, uh, Protorova, I think when we were doing Sonic Mania, he mentioned that he was at an amusement park, and he saw, I think he might have seen one of those. He said, I played Sonic 2 in the arcade, and I said, it probably would have to be that, I would think, but it was, but there were some differences with some of the games. I don't know if Streets of Rage 2, as we're finding Electric, by the way, has the electric whip, so uh, be careful of that. While the bartender's saying, like, yeah, no, I'm, a, I'm not, uh, this is not my fight, my friends. Yeah, it was kind of different. In fact, uh, the Switch port of Sonic Hedgehog 1, the uh, Sega Ages release, does have the Mega Play version of that game, where it does have differences in the sense that it actually is timed. Well, it's timed differently, actually less than the main game. I think you only have like a couple minutes to go through levels, and they actually cut levels out for the purpose of running through. So in that case, it's sort of different, but it is running on a lot of the same tech the Sega Genesis was. And actually, I think I put an edit for Streets of Rage 1 saying that Streets of Rage 1 was available that way, where we're fighting uh, the first boss here, Barbon. He says, come on! You're definitely getting more voice going on here because of the fact that they're running a uh, cartridge size four times the size of the last game. Yeah, they did a lot with 4 megabits, or 1 megabyte, in the case of Street Rage 1, but with 16 megabits or 4 megabytes, you've got much more going on. Yeah, but there's an interesting thing to say that, because you'd think that, alright, this seems like an arcade beat-em-up, and it is, as far as how it operates, but Sega was running this as far as their home division, but hey, how are they managing that with an arcade thing? I guess with Sega, they kind of had stuff with beat-em-ups. Actually, one of the ones I know they had was, um... Well, a couple that were kind of like this, because for years, here's the other thing, I mentioned as I uh, knee Barbin in the crotch, and he's done. And we're done with round one, we hear that wonderful uh, victory music once more. Hmm. Which is the same as Streets Rage 1, and it's going to be the same as Streets Rage 3, and you love hearing it. And I believe I did get another life. Uh, you get a uh, life at 25, at 20,000 points, and then uh, you get your next life at the next 50, and then next to 100,000, and then every 100,000 after that. Assume you don't get a game over. See how it operates as we're going on the bridge. It's under construction. And we are hearing uh, the name of the song here is uh, Spin of the Bridge. One of the more frantic tracks in this game, and uh, get used to that when we get to Streets of Rage 3, because there's going to be a lot of tracks like that in that one. But yeah, it definitely is something to be said about the idea of a game like this, because it does have that element of arcade beat em ups as far as the way it plays. I mean, they were going after Final Fight, which did come out first, the original at least. And then Sega was saying, let's do something from the home market. But when it came to the arcade element, they did have stuff for that going on with things like uh, Dynamic Cop and Die Hard Arcade, or the Dynamic Decca games as it is, but yeah, well, they would focus on stuff of the uh, of the home, at least, for that. Did you hear about the death of Kevin Connery yesterday? Yes, I did. Uh, like, first, I was gonna bring that up. For sure, let's go into that. As we go along, and that's the other thing, remember, with beat-em-ups, there's a lot I can say there as far as, you know, beating up the bikers. You knock them off the bikes. It isn't easy to kill if they get knocked off, and they might just jump off and hurt that way, be careful the bikes. Yeah, we can talk about that, because yeah, Kevin Conroy, we've heard him on this show before, and we'll hear him again eventually when we get to more stuff with Batman. Uh, he was Batman in, um, in, of what we've played in Justice Gods Among Us, and of course, Batman on Batman the Enemy series, as well as ba the Batman Arkham games, and a lot of other elements. He was, uh, younger than I would have liked, honestly, hearing that. He was 66, he was, he had, uh, form of cancer that I don't think lasted long for him, but it was a shock when I heard that. I said, he was only 66 and he passed away. I was really surprised to hear that, and it did take me aback. I was like, wait a minute. The idea of 
the skills he had as a voice performer, and from what I understand, as far as a person, I hear he's a very great person to work with, very high-spirited, and I didn't even know he was sick, honestly. So it was a big shock to me, and I did want to bring that up. He's like, look, we're going to be celebrating stuff of that, as we're, you know, beating them with the pipes and going to the truck, so to go to the Metal Gear, the Metal Gear 1 uh, element. Uh-oh, the truck has started to move, as we're going in fighting uh, Haku or Hakuyo. Yeah, because they named everybody. Yeah, this is, I guess, going to be in that way also to go back to that as far as what you're saying. Like, Chris, I did hear about that. It definitely did take me back. I was definitely kind of feeling in a bit of a funk here in that. It made me say to myself, I want to do something for this. I want to mention that for the show tonight and also get to playing other Batman games and hear more of him. Or just have elements of kind of getting that element. Because, yeah, he was a great Batman, no question. When you think about all the elements as far as Batman with the movies and the television series and all that stuff, I mean, people like... And pretty heavy hitter, hitters. People like Adam West and... Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, even George Clooney as far as Batman and Rob was concerned, and then uh, Christian Bale for the uh, for the Christopher Nolan films, and now uh, Rob, Robert Pattinson from uh, Lost City of Z and uh, mm -hmm. Twilight. Initially, like, yeah, people hated him as uh, Edward Cullen in those Twilight movies, but yeah, it's like, no, he's good as Batman. And uh, Kevin Conroy's in the conversation, and actually fitting to that, he was in a couple of the Batman movies, including one that got a theatrical release, which was Batman Mask of the Phantasm, which is a great game, a great movie, which is fall, uh, celebrating his 30th anniversary next year. So it is definitely a big loss, because he definitely had a great way of how he was running Batman, as far as that intonation, just the idea of, and you can almost hear him, whenever you're playing something with Batman, almost hearing him saying, like, I got to take care of Joker, or something like that. It's like, look, but clearly I can't do the Kevin Conroy element the way he could, for sure. So in that way, that goes to that, and as I mentioned, at some point we're going to have to do more Batman games, for sure, of which... I bought Batman Returns on the Super Nintendo, which is a beat-em-up actually like Streets of Rage 2 is, but I need to be ready for that one, and I only bought it recently, so it's one I think I'll do uh, next Christmas, or next December specific, so I'll be ready for that. But yeah, we'll definitely do other stuff as far as Conroy, because he's been in a lot of the games. He was in Batman Arkham Asylum, and Arkham Knight, and Arkham City, and uh, I think what other ones he's been in. He's done a lot of other things, although mainly I guess people know as Batman as we're fighting uh, Jets. He does that flight there, when he comes down like that, you punch him, you have to time it right, or he might do the dive off, but also don't let him get close to you, otherwise he will throw you, and that hurts very, 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 very badly. Ew. Yeah, but also that, uh, double tap B move of yours, usually is gonna go over him, or under him in the case of Max, but we got him. Yeah, I did hear that, that was definitely a, uh, mm, a very melancholy thing. Actually, I heard that actually right around the time of my lunch break, to the point where... As far as my lunch break, I didn't practice this game on my lunch break like I did every other day of this week. As a Green Dreamer for the amusement park, which is an amazing piece of music. God, I love this. But um, when I heard that, I was like, I kind of want to just play the one Batman game I had on Switch. And I was basically keeping that uh, like on my screen alone, specifically, which was uh, Batman The Enemy Within, which was the uh, second of the Telltale Batman games. Which doesn't have uh, Kevin Conroy in it as Batman, I don't think. Chef, feel free to correct me if that's not right. But it's one I quite liked as far as how that was. I mean, it's a mature rated game for sure as far as the opening of that. Especially what uh, one of the villains does at the beginning. It's like, oh, no, no, no. I gotta keep my uh, perspective off of how violent the game gets. Definitely a good case of that. And it made me get into the Batman mood. It was making me think about Kevin Conroy, honestly. And that thought of, you know, that loss, you know. You get, I mean, because we've mentioned that before. We mentioned that last week, actually. Because I found on this show last week, uh, thanks to you, like first, that Aaron Carter had passed away. And actually, as far as other cases of that this week... Actually, within the past couple days, uh, Gallagher, uh, the famous comedian who uh, had an element of, you know, shooting watermelons and things, he passed away, I think, on Friday as well. And uh, the co-founder of The uh, Clash, the uh, punk band from the 1970s, whose name escapes me at the moment, I'll have a name of him as well, he passed away today. So it's like, okay, a lot of big names, you know, going this way, and it was very sad. And actually, there's somebody from Sega who I don't know if she worked on this game, there were other games of Sega she worked on. She was also kind of young, too. I think she was in her 50s. So it's kind of a... I mean, as I said, that's the other thing. We're not made of stone on this program. It, just to get an element of that, if anybody ever thought, like, hey, we are, like, no. It is that kind of personal element, and you feel that. Wait, even when I'm playing a game where... Okay, fine, here's the ultimate hypocrisy, I guess. In fact, I'm playing a game where I'm killing people uh, while talking about, you know, the idea of people who have died, but still, it's like, fine. It's a beat-em-up as far as that, so I kind of have to. And look, the idea is that they took our friend, it's getting personal, and we're gonna make sure that, you know, protect him. Like, hey, they're ex-cops, uh, Blaze and uh, Adam specifically are ex-cops, we're going along. And hearing this wonderful music as we're going to the music park and up on the pirate ship. 
Which I guess would be something maybe that I guess Batman would be running into as far as the uh, maybe stuff with uh, like things the Joker would do with the uh, animated series. And I said I gotta try and get the games that are based on the animated series, which there were two of them. There were um, The Adventures of Batman and Robin on Super Nintendo, which is by Konami, and it is a game that costs a bit of money, but I would want to invest in that, even though it does cost a lot. And actually one on the Game Boy, which was uh, Batman the Animated Series, which isn't super cheap either, but it is one that is a bit cheaper. I've heard it's really, really good. You think the like, Game Boy Batman, but apparently, yeah, it's great. All right, yeah, let's get going as we go along on uh, the pleasure cruise, I guess, of the pirate ship. Yeah, so far it seems like I'm kind of going through that, and there's a life, uh, get that, and you yeah, get a life, duh. But yeah, we're getting, uh, Kusunagi, so we're getting a bunch of, uh, samurais coming around. Oh! Or to go in the element of, uh, the Doobie Brothers, seven samurai with their, or, yeah, I'm trying to remember the lyric of China Grove, it's, uh, it's giving me the moment. Yeah. They're, with the samurai swords, you, you can hear the music at night, which is, uh, true with the case of what Streets of Rage is doing. You do get the great uh, parallax scrolling as they are going along with the Hanzu. I always think of Atari Hanzu as far as uh, Kill Bill. Like, you know, like, didn't you swear a blood oath to never make another sword? Like, yeah, in that case, yeah, he's not using sword, he's using kunai. But, yeah, the uh, samurai in this, what they do is they kind of uh, warp around. So you have to kind of be quick in order to grab him or hit him. Hmm. And go to the next area. And by the way, uh, when you go to a different area in this game, because uh, Street Witch 1 didn't have this, you do lose the weapon you're holding, so yeah, you can only use the weapon in where you're at. We're actually gonna have another one as we're going into that, uh, Cave of Despair, potentially, as we're seeing the Not Jack there, Little Lisa and, uh, Bino, which is weird because Bino, um, is the name of a gas supplement, uh, that is used as far as medicine. I used to see advertisements of it all the time, watching Price is Right and Supermarket Sweep and shot the few drop in the 90s, which was definitely weird that way. As I said, I was a weird kid with it, and I guess same, I guess, with Streets of Rage in the sense that my experience with starting to play this massively was with that Dreamcast port, which is bad in terms of how it's emulated, but hey, you can't take the great game out of it completely, and it doesn't completely, but we can show that version eventually, but I said, like, for the purpose of showing Street of Rage 2 off, we're not showing that. We're gonna be showing a good version, so Genesis Mini uh, 1 it is. But as I said, I was spoiled for choice. I could have had uh, a bunch of other versions I could have run since I couldn't use that uh, Genesis Edition. All right, uh, here's the thing. When you're in the cave here, or the alien cave, I think they call it, or whatever it is. Yeah, you have those uh, eggs there. They'll explode, so hit them from a distance, or get out of the way when you, uh, are close to them. Hey, if you hold on to the sword for a while, you can cause a lot of damage. Don't let the enemies surround you, because there are a lot of enemies here. Yeah. And the signals, who I don't know if I mentioned when we played Streets of Rage 1, but the letter there, it says P signal. It is indicating the color of them. So there's Y signals for yellow. Uh, there was R signal for red, G signal for green, P for, uh, purple. And due to the slides, be careful to slice them. Yeah, but you can keep them a distance with the- with the sword, you'll be good. But it's not easy to do that, remember, three drops of the sword or any weapon and they are gone. <clears throat> yeah, I'm doing surprisingly well on this as we're fighting, um... Uh, Vahilis. Which actually, I was surprised was able to hit him with the sword, I've never been able to do that. He's on the plane in the middle, so, uh, keep an eye on that and hit him. Usually use jump uh, attacks. If I can hit him and go that wound. And hopefully you're also hearing the music out effectively. Let me know if you're not, because I don't want this music to be in you know, a lost on everybody. Alright, so yeah, he is done. But that is not our uh, final uh, destination here. We got Ryo and yeah. By the way, this is the first game in the franchise to start having names of the enemies. Yeah. Keep back. Yeah, because the explosion can hurt the enemy, so uh, make sure to use it. All right, here is the boss here. This is... Is Blanca like Guy Zamza? Actually, uh, Jayner64 mentioned that, because, yeah, my coworkers are watching me play this game uh, for practice all week, and they're like, kind of sort of getting into it that way. So I'm like, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing this, and me extolling the virtues of why uh, this is a great game, and might be the best game of the franchise to actually chat to that. What would you say is your favorite game in the Streets of Rage franchise, if you have one? And I also, what is your experience as far as beat-em-ups, other beat-em-ups you really, really like? I mean, we mentioned this franchise, we mentioned uh, Final Fight, which we're playing the third game in about a month. And I'm killing Zamza really quick, surprisingly, with the sword. That's how powerful the sword can be. And, uh, and we also did uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers a couple months ago, which is really interesting enough, is the most watched, or the second most watched, uh, Fine, so the most, it's the most watched show of the ones I have on the YouTube site from this year, and the second most watched of any from, uh, any that we have, uh, recordings up. Alright, uh, for level four, 
I'm going to the baseball stadium. Yeah, we are going to the baseball stadium to the tune of Underlogic. Oh my god, I love this piece of music. It starts out a little bit as a remix of uh, Dreamer from last level, but then you have it going with the uh, beats going on, and then the main melody coming in. And we are going to do baseball. It is amazing. It is so good. I'll tell you, if nothing else, it's one of those games that I don't even know if I'd say this about uh, Final Fight as much as I love Final Fight. Is that I don't even know if the music in Final Fight, well, I'm getting uppercut a bit, Donovan. Yeah. Which they can do that, so yeah, jumping and kicking is not always gonna work. Yeah, it definitely makes you wanna get up and start dancing, I will say that. And actually, I think I mentioned this, uh, also, it's like Boo, it says over there. I do have the writings out there on the side. Um. Actually, I think I said this was the first game, but I'll indicate it again now, in case it didn't. Yuzo Koshiro did have experience with like, going into clubs and like doing DJ stuff, and that was a heavy inspiration of his when it came to the soundtracks for basically every game in this franchise. Although, actually, in the case of this one, one thing to indicate while I take care of Koshu... Eh. And also, by the way, since you do lose health when you use the special attacks, it kind of becomes a, big, a bit of a risk-reward in the sense of how you want to use it. It does change a bit when we get to the third game. It was not just uh, Yuzo Koshiro did the music for this. I'm giving him a lot of credit, for sure. It was also... Motohiro Kawashima, who did the music for this. There are a couple tracks he did, I'll indicate those later. He did the music for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Eye of the Beholder on the Sega CD, as well as uh, Wild Streets Reach 3, as well as the remake of Zork, which is on PlayStation and the Sega Saturn. And also he did the music for a game that uh, Yuzu Kishiro made. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Uh, Amazing Island, which is on the GameCube. It was a... It kind of was pulling off of Pokemon a little bit, kind of, from what I understand. But also, it was a lot of different things. It was ancient. Uh, Kashira's company, who made that, I didn't hear it was that great. I don't know if it's a game that costs a lot of money, as far as GameCube is concerned. And Sega published it, so there's that as well. They're uh, going out on the field. But yeah, he did the music for that game specifically. I'll indicate the tracks there, because most of them are of Kashiro's, and you can kind of tell as far as what they are. And this is definitely one of those. As far as one other thing, I guess, to go to that, since I was mentioning uh, Amazing Island, I guess, the making of this. As far as the design of this game, this is interesting because I was looking back as far as what is the history of this game. Because this is a game that has a lot of love and a lot of legacy on itself. Understandably so. Uh, this game, the lead designer of this game, was actually uh, Yuzu Kishiro's sister. It was uh, Ayano Kishiro, who also uh, did Sonic uh, graphic design on uh, Sonic 1, the 8-bit version that we played on the show. As well as uh, Legend of Oasis on the Sega Saturn, which is one that uh, uh, Chasm 22 is familiar with, and actually has. Yeah, because there's a lot of games with the Saturn that cost a lot of money, and I'm saying, like, hey, I know there's stuff you want to be involved in, especially when you get to Suikoden. And I am saying like, hey, if you want to do any of this stuff on Saturn or see it, uh, feel free to call it and we can do it. And she also did uh, uh, the design of the scrolling stages in Actors 2 for Super Nintendo, as well as a uh, game that unfortunately has not gotten a US release and people begging for it, uh, Terra Nigma, which is on the Super Famicom. I believe it was Enix who made that, at least I think it was. I might be wrong. If uh, I'm wrong, it'll be down here what the company actually made that. It was an RPG that is apparently seems one of the best of that era, but we might potentially get a release of it on modern cases. I do have a bunch of sound games. Oh, uh, speaking of the devil, hi, Chasm22. So good to see you for Streets of Rage 2. Yeah, I just mentioned your name, and uh, there you go. You are here. Uh, welcome to you. I'm so glad to see you for this game. Yeah, you know this game very well because you saw me practicing this game all week as far as during our lunch breaks. As we're at the baseball stadium with Big Ben, who is uh, belly flopping me. Hope you're doing well. Let us know any memories you have of elements of uh, Streets of Rage, aside from what I showed, or other beat-em-ups you like, or other elements of Saturn, or anything you got on your mind game-wise, and we can go into it, because that was what we do. Yes, I've heard about, um, uh, I'd like to indicate which is that one. I'm getting killed by Big Ben. He goes, like, <laughs> like, yeah. Also, one thing also about uh, the Big Ben, or the Big, uh, guys, they will still shoot the fire if you get too far away, but also you don't have the weight thing, where if you pick them up, and you get yourself, you get yourself hurt. That was thankfully taken out of, from the last game. He was just about to breathe the fire, but like, yeah, you're done. Uh, yeah, feel free to indicate what you're saying you've heard of, because... Oh, baby, Amazing Island? Pretty much only what I saw you play of is what I've seen of Streets of Rage. Well, let me tell you, my friend, if you've not played Streets of Rage, any of them, you are in for a treat. As I mentioned, there are a lot of versions of this game. So much so that, thank God, I own nine of them, so that when the Sega Genesis cartridge... 
I'm not running the Genesis cartridge, by the way, on this, since you're just jumping on now, just to indicate that. As you're going down the elevator section, which, as you mentioned, quote, you can't have a beat em up without an elevator section. And this game has three of them, by the way. It's worth pointing out. But they do vary them up, because we're going down in the case of this one to start. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of versions of this, so if you have a modern system, you're gonna be able to have access to this, or if you have other systems with it, of which, I guess to go and have the versions I own, uh, the Genesis cartridge, which is that we can't use because it's not working with my setup, so I said Genesis Mini, which is our planet, I have it on the 360 three ways in terms of the Xbox Live Arcade version that I don't think you can buy anymore, the Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection on the Xbox 360, the SVC Streets of Rage Collection that we're going to use for the third game, and then I have the Sega Smashback Volume 1 on the Dreamcast, which is a horrible port. At some point we'll show that collection off. Let me think, what else? Uh, I have the Sega Classics Collection on the Switch and the Xbox One that has it. And I... I think that's it. And this. The mini, the Genesis Mini 1. I believe that's it. But that's also, I guess, the good news is that if you haven't played this game, it is readily available. And it is a lot of fun, especially when playing with other people. I will say that. You know, playing this game solo, this is one of those games that if you have friends or anybody with you, you're gonna just have a great time. I mentioned this actually, we played the first game. I was at MAGFest, I just ran up to somebody, it's like, who, was, who I was passing by someone, he's playing Streets of Rage 1. Hmm on the TV there, and he said, Hey, do you want to play Streets of Rage? I said, Do I? And we did, and we went through that game very quickly as we were seeing a face from the first game, Abba Day Day. Remember him? He's the guy who ran forward and did that uppercut. You can't exactly exploit that in this game the same way you could in that one, because he will run across the screen. And also he has two life bars. They indicate that with the stars there. And the different color of his life bar as far as blue. He'll do that runaway, but he'll also do a bit of a belly flop to you, and also he'll do that Ah, thing, where he'll basically kind of get in your way. So you have to be a little careful. And the other thing, also, I haven't done this yet. You can do this. I should have showed this with the first game, which is... Ow. Getting uppercut if I showed that in the first game. That's true. You can sort of stun lock enemies, but you can't exactly exploit it. Because, yeah, if you hit the button, the B button, repeatedly, you'll get a combo going. And, yeah, they'll, they're cheering, you know, the lucha wrestling element of this. You can sort of get them into a stun lock with punches, but sometimes they'll break out, especially as you go along like that. So in that case, I'm hitting him in the shins, but... I right, fine, that sort of worked, I guess, as he went down. But, yeah, you can sort of do that, but as you go later, that's it. Hmm. I saw you just fight this guy like 20 times at work. Yeah, that is not wrong. He is not lying. Because I practiced this game all week. So I guess it's showing, feasibly, as far as that with my skills. Not because I was thinking like, oh, this is going to be really, really hard. And their games are going to have to do that with. I know when we do Contra Hardcore next year... I'm probably gonna do that, uh, August and September. I know I gotta practice. That game is insanely difficult. I just want to be ready on this, and also because, honestly, at the point, I didn't have anything else really to kind of play that I was like, oh yeah, or fine. Nothing I really was feeling like, oh, I want to play as far as my lunch break case. So I said, okay, fine, we'll play this. And also because, um, a game I was gonna have this week, uh, is not here. Uh, let me explain that. Uh, yesterday was the release of Atari 50, which is a collection that has a bunch of old Atari games. A couple that cost a lot of money, because it goes across a lot of Atari elements. Arcade, 2600, uh, 5200, 7800, Atari Lynx, Atari ST, and Atari Jaguar. There's games on that from Jaguar that are like $400 alone. So, uh, that collection for 40 bucks is a deal, but I bought the Steelbook version for Switch. I guess they delayed it because... I got an email from Amazon saying that, hey, this isn't coming out until December, uh, 3rd or 4th, I believe. But then I got an email yesterday saying that, oh, it's coming out, I think, right before Thanksgiving. So, I still have to kind of wait on that one, which is fine. But I was like, yeah, I probably would have played that if that would have been the case. But I was like, fine, I'm practicing for Streets of Rage anyway, because I have to do that. I mentioned that before, I think, on the show. So, I can go on that. And feel free to go into anything else chat you got as far as what we're seeing or... Any, I guess any reaction to anything I'm talking about, we're hitting down, uh, Biat... What was he? Biatko, I think? Yeah, Biatko is his name. As we're on the, uh, the bobbing ship, uh, with the tune of Slow Moon. I love this. It definitely gets you in this great, uh, mood as we're fighting Raven. <clears throat> he does block, so that's the other thing, so, uh, you can't block, by the way. I don't think any game in this franchise, except maybe 4, I don't remember if 4 gives you blocking, it might let you do that, so you have to be careful and either grab him or get him out of the way uh, quickly or when he's not blocking or take advantage when he's not. 
need your specific moves. Alright, come back. Also, I'm waiting to use the chicken as a full health recovery. Alright, yeah, he'll do that kick there. Yeah, you can grab him and throw him. That can do a lot of damage. Anyways, we're seeing another, not Barbon, uh, Wayne. There are a lot of, uh, power swaps in this game. But yeah, they are usually a lot harder to defeat because they have higher health. <clears throat> There's gonna be a change from the, from, uh, Final Fight 3 when we get to that. Because actually I realized when I was doing tests on Final Fight 3 to get a sense of when we're playing for that empty week on, uh, December 17th. I realized that game is easy. So, uh... Okay, I'm fine. I'm making this game look easy, but I mean, I don't think that's gonna last. And if I already, if I do complete this too quickly, we're gonna look at the Japanese version. Because I'm gonna show off as much as I can for this. Just for the purpose of that. But yeah, feel free to go into anything else you got, Chaz, as far as that, as, uh, yeah, Wayne is, uh, dropping to the ground. Now yeah, we're going out into the night sky. I love this. I just love the milieu of this. I think this goes to... I mean, I don't know if maybe this is... I, don't, I may feel differently as we go through more with uh, Final Fight specific. There's something about Streets of Rage. I mean, I love Final Fight. It's a great game. The Capcom franchise, which we played uh, the first two games so far. But there's something about uh, Streets of Rage that I always found very appealing in the sense that this is a game that's very much about its atmosphere, not even just as far as its music. As far as the way it sets atmosphere, as far as the look, and I guess the music accentuating that a bit, sort of, as we get the sword. All right, yeah, run towards me, but yeah, Mach is uh, punching me. And when you die, by the way, like uh, with Streets of Rage 1, the enemies will be nice, and they will uh, fall down to the ground, let you uh, kind of have a fine chance to come back. All right, where are you? Okay, yeah, I want to try to see if I can't slice him out of the sky. Oh, come on. Uh, okay, it looked, it looked like I hit him, but it didn't do anything. All right, fine, I'll do the uh, safe way, which is... Okay, go there, drop down. Perfect. All right. Actually, as far as other beat-em-ups, actually, Chasm 22, since you're here, um, I hope you don't mind to indicate this one. Uh, this is sort of a beat-em-up. Uh, I know you mentioned you have a love of Guardian Heroes for the sake of Saturn, which is by Treasure, uh, who made Dynamite Heady and Gunster Heroes. That kind of is a beat-em-up a little bit. Sort of, although it's kind of like on multiple planes. This was a game, Code of Princess, which is on. It was on 3DS, and there's a Switch version I own that is actually a lot like it. That's a interesting one as well. We can definitely show that. Uh, either way, you'll want to do it. That's a fun one. Yes, it is. Uh, I have the 360 version, which is uh, downloadable for about 10 bucks. It's also on PS3, but it's also on Saturn. I realize, yeah, you have it on Saturn, which is uh, one of those. Yeah, hold on to that, my friend, because uh, yeah, the Sega Saturn stuff. Costs a lot of money, especially the U.S. elements of it. So, yeah, uh, actually, interestingly enough, uh, I don't think Streets of Rage had a version on the Saturn. Any of them. Uh, at least I don't think they did. Chat, feel free to correct me if they did, and I'm forgetting. Because there were a couple of uh, Genesis releases or collections of sorts on the Saturn that only Japan got. But I don't think Streets of Rage was one of them. Oh, well. Although, I guess, uh, fine, they sort of get something with Streets of Rage in the sense of they had... Uh, Die Hard Arcade, or Dynamite Decca, as it was known for Japan. They played a bit like Streets of Rage, but it was not exactly Streets of Rage. In fact, actually, with Streets of Rage. Um, and we'll get into this more when we play the third game, because uh, it was a distance of about 26 years between the third and the fourth game. Sega was trying for a while to do something with Streets of Rage going into 3D. Uh, the first attempt turned into Fighting Force. We said, we don't want to have this, so they sold it off, and I just picked up Fighting Force and said, okay, this is our beat-em-up uh, method. And then Sega kind of tried to do something on the Dreamcast, and that went away. And then they did Spike Out, which was not exactly the same thing. And then eventually... Uh, the Temu and, uh, yeah, it was the Temu who was involved in that, got involved and said, fine, we're gonna make, uh, the fourth game, and, uh, everybody cheered, it's amazing. Alright, so, we are getting close to the boss, uh, but first we have Balloon. Yeah, I guess he's, uh, like a balloon in a certain way, but yeah, wait for him to come there and just slice him. Yeah, so you can sort of be cheap with this, but also, if you're going on the higher difficulties, the enemies hurt badly. And even doing this, yeah, the enemies will be wise to your tricks as you go along. Eh. And the reason you want to kind of stay here and do that is because we have a boss coming up. All right. As we have Galcia. I don't have the sword anymore, but I... Okay, maybe I do need it. As against, uh, not Bear Hugger from Street, uh, from Super Punch-Out. Yeah, he'll stay... By the way, the enemy, the bosses will stay still in some cases like that. This is Red Bear, by the way. They'll stay still while they wait for him to get close before they start attacking. But if you throw an enemy into them, they'll get hurt and then they'll start attacking you instantly. All right, let me get the chicken. All right. Mm. Yeah, delicious chicken, it gives you full health, and you're gonna love seeing that. Maybe this game does give you them right at a boss, the same way the other ones do. Also, yeah, you can't do the, uh, di the, uh, double tap attack, I guess that's what I call it, specific, and get in a good case. You can also do back attack, which is you hit the B and the C button, 
together. But yeah, that. You do a leg sweep. And it is different for characters. Ah, shit. Oh, shit. Speaking of which, also, I almost uh, knocked my Jez Mini 2 off the side. And yeah, my uh, copy of uh, Streets of Rage 2 kind of fell off of that. Yeah. Fine. I'm getting knocked down. I'm pushing that back up so it doesn't fall off. Yeah, that's how into this game I was getting. And that goes, I think, to the idea of what Streets of Rage is, and a lot of like, really good beat-em-ups. The idea is it feels so visceral. It feels so enjoyable to get into that element. It's like, yeah, you know, I want to kill this, or I got to beat this guy up. Yeah, this Red Bear, yeah, he's a boxer. He has the, the uppercut, which is not good. He also has the stomp there. You can sort of stun lock him a little bit with the punch, but even that's not going to work great, because, yeah, he'll have the charge up. And honestly, this is the part of the game where you start losing lives left and right. And you do have limited continues, by the way, which is also part of the list. You know, I should stop doing that. He's still doing that uppercut thing. I should learn, but like, yeah, that's sometimes what I sometimes will get into a case of. I'm stubborn. Also, if your health is uh, too low, you can't use the special attack on A button because it takes uh, health when you use it. Boy, right, let's see if I can't beat him. Yeah, don't do that again. I'm like, yeah. Also, I beat him. I do get a full health recovery. Boom, he's dead. All right, that was close. And I do love hearing that when you go along. Because mm. I do love the voices as far as this. They're a little uh, muffled in a certain degree, but of course, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Christian Nerd 64's element of um, the hilarious voices of Sega Beat-em-Ups, which would be Golden Axe. The Genesis version specifically, where they go the ah, And of course, the, the uh, female's going Actually, I don't even know if that sounded right. It sounded like a cat as we are on the beach. Or uh, getting ready to go into the jungle uh, which, to the tune of uh, Wave 131. Oh. Yeah, but yeah, we do have a lot of enemies to fight, as it is because, yeah, what's going on with the Syndicate? Yeah, they're back, and I guess uh, after we destroyed uh, Mr. X last time, he said, fine, I'm bringing in everybody. Everybody from everywhere, and yeah, they're getting wise with tricks now because they're doing the uppercuts. Also, when you're holding weapon, Oh, yes. yeah, I couldn't uh, time that down. Oh, there we go, got it. Yeah, if you hit the B and C button, you toss the weapon out. You do lose it, but it does hurt the enemy. And you can hit him from the distance. Alright, come on. Yeah, well, sometimes you do that slide out, which makes it really hard to hit him. Alright, uh, uh, got him. And every time you beat uh, enemies, yeah, you get that go. It's like, yeah, you can't have a beat em up without that as well. Alright. Mm mm mm. Yeah, actually, I probably should just do the uh, stun lock method, which you could sort of kind of get away with doing still, as long as you just rhythmically hit that B button. Or you can kind of start the combo, as long as you don't do the kick, which is, I believe, on the fifth hit. As far as that... Oh, uh, yeah, we're fighting uh, the boxers again. We have Pheasant and... Uh, oh, shit. Yeah, they uh, they got in between me. Yeah, we have Condor, Pheasant, and uh, Falcon. So I guess, like, I guess the uh, Falcon kick for... Uh, Cat Falcon from F-Zero, but yeah, this is before that existed. That was back when Cat Falcon was still in the car, and it was only in one game. Oh, uh, sort of. I don't know, he was only in one game at this point, because it was 1992 when this came out, and uh, the uh, BS, uh, it's called this, uh, BS, uh, BS F-Zero, which was on the Satellaview service. That was uh, set to that. Alright, we're going to the deep jungle. Looks like something out of Contra. Actually, now we're going back to I was mentioned Contra at one point. Or uh, Metal Slug. Or here in the tune of uh, Jungle Base. Ow. As Hakuko is uh, punching me. Oh, stop. Alright, he was just a little off. So that's the other thing about, you know, full movement around like this. Is that you can just uh, avoid him a little bit. It's funny, it wasn't a Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection. I found out there's sequels to Streets of Rage and Golden Axe. It wasn't, eh? Uh, where did you find that then? Feel free to go into that. In my case, fine. I knew the I knew the sequels existed because I played the first one. I I had cousin fine. I got a cousin who played through the first one in front of me specific. I had cousins who had the second one, and I heard the third one was around. I heard that it existed. I just had never played them. But I guess in your case, yeah. What was your experience? Actually, with Golden Axe, uh, Golden Axe makes a little sense because with Golden Axe, we didn't get that third game here. Uh, Golden Axe three never came out in the U.S. Whereas Streets of Rage did. Every uh, one of those three Streets of Rages came out. It was, uh. Oh, it was that? Oh, wait. Was it was it the Sonic Souls Genesis Collection? Or was uh, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3? So. Okay, so if it wasn't the Sonic Souls Genesis Collection, I was getting hit by uh, a QO again. Damn. We're getting force palms. It probably been that SVC Streets of Rage Collection, which, uh, if you are wondering what's the best version of these games to get, it would be that one, I would say. Specifically. 
And if you have an Xbox Series S or X or an Xbox One, uh, that Xbox 360 version will play on those units as well. Because it has all three games, or fine, the first three games, I should say, as the Japanese versions of all three. And it's not like uh, the third game where the uh, Genesis Mini 2 censored it. And also, by the way, doing the stun lock thing on Gormon, sometimes it'll just get out, it'll get stuck as far as it, yeah, so I'm making this easy. Okay, it was the Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection, which is fair enough, and I mentioned, okay, fine, I mentioned it with the first game, I mentioned it yet again on this one. In the 2000s, Sega kept making excuses about why they didn't want to re-release this game, or any of these games, really. They said, okay, Sonic Ult or Sonic Gems Collection on GameCube and PlayStation 2, we're not putting it in for US or Europe because of the third game, I guess, but also because they said Sonic's family-friendly stats in the U.S. is not in keeping with these, and then Shadow the Hedgehog got a teen rating, so I'm like, yeah, fuck you, Sega, you're not fooling anyone. Uh, then the Sega Genesis collection was on PS2 and PSP. It didn't have it either, any of these, and I said, wait a minute, why is that? Then they said in an interview, we think this will get a mature rating on this collection. I'm like, are you nuts? And they came out on the Wii's Virtual Console uh, that year, so I guess they kind of said, all right, fine, we're going to give it to you. And it was rated E, uh, every one of them except the third one. And that's the censored third one, admittingly. But, I mean, okay, in that case, it's good that way. And actually, I'll say that, like, first thing you mentioned that. When it came to the, uh, the decision about what version of uh, Street Rage 2 do I want to show on this for tonight, since the Genesis was out of the question, hey, yeah, stop holding me to the enemies. Um, or having, uh, Rene and, uh, Tesca. Oh, right, yeah, so get rid of them. I was, that was gonna be my second choice. I was thinking of using that collection for it. At some point, we should show that collection off feasibly. I mean, also remember, we do have the uh, compilation program we do every Memorial Day, although I am tempted to flip it for next year, potentially, as far as something I might want to do as far as a showcase show, or I might just say, like, fine, I'll do the showcase show just randomly. So at some point, we gotta do that collection. I do want to come up with a reason to show that. Either for games that are only in that, of which I don't know if there's anything anymore that is only in- oh, actually, no, there is. Uh, Fantasy Star 1 is in that, from Sega Master's. In fact, there are a lot of Sega Master games in that, uh, collection. So in that case, yeah, I can use it for that, as well as anything else. So we definitely show that collection off, because that's a great collection. I remember actually buying that with, um, actually, when it came out in 2009, I was right there for it. It's like, okay, I want to have this. I think also because Streets of Rage, uh, all of them were on that. It was actually my first time playing the third game, actually. So in that case, like, oh, great, thank you for, uh, providing that. Actually, I'll tell you, oh, I know how we'll play, um, we'll use that Sonic Soldier Magenta's collection. We use it for, um, uh, Kid Chameleon. Because you can remap the buttons in that, and actually for the run in that, I put on the right trigger, and my god, it feels good playing that. Because we're finding Stealth, the new, uh, rocket guy, but also, uh, yeah, the enemy I hated in the last game, Souther. Yeah, who's like Blanca again, but yeah, he hurts bad, and he has the, uh, uppercut there, and uh, yeah, he's, it's not good. Alright, whoa! And he does the throws, which hurt bad. Speaking of Contra, I recently bought Super Cyborg, which is... I don't know if I've heard that game. That is, uh... Is that something on... What is that? It's on... Probably on Modern Systems, yes. It's like a spiritual successor to Contra, I guess, maybe? Feel free to go into that, because I'm not aware of what it is. It might be one that I'd want to take a look at. Especially because we'll, we'll start doing stuff with Contra. We'll start with Hardcore. I just have to practice Hardcore, and I will practice that game for sure as we go along. I know I need to. And I won't necessarily cheap out by... Or, uh... I guess, uh wimp out, I guess, uh, but doing the, oh, I like the Japanese version. I'll see what I can do on that. I'll figure something, but we're doing that next year, I promise you. And if Super Cyborg is a uh, request, uh, feel free to go on that. And Chasm 22, I don't know if I indicated this explicitly to you when you've been on the show in chat this way. Any requests you want to make for the show, make, uh, at, make it. Uh, ask your shower, see if we'll do it. Uh, Cyber Cy Super Cyborg is uh, basically a Contra clone, which is good, I guess, because, well, Konami has not done a new one, as we're in the uh, munitions plant going back to the industry as far as the, uh, the theme of, or the music here. As we're actually almost near the end of the game, I think we're gonna beat this thing really quick, but we're not gonna be done with the show quickly. That's why I think it's good that we're doing this. It's good, I guess, that they're doing a Contra clone, I guess, because Konami has done the re-releases in the Contra Anniversary Collection of the old stuff, but they've not done a new Contra game. Well, fine, they sort of did one, sort of recently. The last one they did was a couple years ago. That was Contra Rogue Corps, which I hear is horrible. And, uh... Outside of that, they haven't really done anything else with that, so like, hey, you know, if they're not doing stuff with that, at least, you know, the element of kind of getting something like, and we mentioned that with, um, actually, a lot of the games we've talked about, we've been playing Shadow Hearts. Shadow Hearts is getting, uh, its spiritual successor called, uh, Penny Blood. And then, uh, Mega Man, we had Mighty, Mon Mighty Number no. 9, with Castlevania, we had Bloodstained, out. Uh, actually, with this franchise, 
there are a lot of games that were kind of trying to pull it before Streets of Rage 4 came out. I remember um, The Takeover, which I believe is a game that Matt McMuscles of The What Happened Show was sort of involved in that one. As well as uh, Streets of Rogue, which is uh, a roguelike beat-em-up. I believe it's on Switch, I think it's on uh, the Modern Systems. I guess with, uh, with uh, what's called uh, Super Cyborg, what is that on? Uh, that's probably on a bunch of systems, I can assume PS4, Switch, Xbox One, PC, I think, yes. I'd be curious to see that. I mean, the idea of, like, newer games, it is, I guess. Because we've done that before with the House of the Dead remake and other stuff. I mean, we're going to do that, well, okay, fine, not newer game, a port of a not insanely old game in uh, March when Protorova and I are going to play uh, Game Dev Tycoon uh, Switch port, as we're seeing Enola, as well as uh, Kanzu. Eh. Yeah, but also in that case, when you do the combo, they don't always uh, stop. So, all right, fine, I sort of stun-locked him, not by my intention. And there's life there, and, uh, yeah, you do have the, uh, conveyor belts, like in the last game, they'll push you backwards. Mm -hmm. They'll push the item backwards, so yeah, that is, yeah, give him a chicken, my friend. Ooh! Alright, uh, there's Bo and, uh, Delala. Yeah, Delala. Eh. They kind of operate the same way, but yes, yeah, some of the enemies, even despite the color changes they have, they will have different things. Like, in his case, Bo will drop out the kunai. So it gives you an ability to run weapon. At least you pick something up. Uh. Uh. Okay, good. Yeah, you, you you do have to get the timing down when it comes to doing the uh, recovery from that. And I it is different than uh, Streets of Rage 1, where I believe you only had to hit the jump button when you went, oh yeah, and you get shocked. I'm glad I got to show that, just because, like, yeah, look at that. It shows exactly what Sega was doing with this game when it came to enhancing it over, or enhancing the tech of this over what uh, Streets of Rage 1 already had, which looked great for the lesser tech it was running or the lower cartridge size. And actually, I guess one thing about the cartridge size in this game, this was the, uh, at the time, hmm, along with Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition, it was the first 16 megabit cartridge that came out in the U.S. for the Genesis. And it was, uh, not the largest. I believe the largest is, uh, 48, I think it was, for Super Street Fighter 2, I think. If that's wrong, I'll put an element of that. Also, there is the D-Signal. I don't know what the color is for him. He's sort of yellow. I guess he's... I don't know. He's dead. I guess dead. Dead signal in this case. But as far as the, um... As far as the uh, enemy... Or the color name, I don't know. Chat, feel free if you know what that color was for D-Signal. Feel free. Yeah, we have the second of third elevator elements. And, uh, the piece of music here, which is, uh... Expander. This is by, um... Motohiro Kawashima. So, yeah, um... Kishira, or user Kashira did not do this piece of music, and if it sounds like how the soundtrack of Street of Rage 3 sounded, yeah, um, you'll get to that, we'll get to that when we play that game, because, uh, they were both involved in music on that, and it definitely has more frantic, uh, sound to it. Actually, I gotta be honest, I'm like, oh shit, Griffiths grabbed me. I'm glad it showed the grab, though, because it just showed that, yeah, I wasn't lying, was it? that hurts, and it hurts bad, come on. So basically, don't try and grab any of the, uh, jet enemies. Actually, it even has some of the same elements as far as the first level of uh, Street Fighter 3. It goes that. Diddle, 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 diddle. It's like, yeah, it definitely is getting more frantic. Like, oh, yeah, we're getting towards the end. All right, come on. Like I said, it sounds like a great techno beat. You know, go into a club. Like, pump this shit up. That's what I'm saying. That's what you want to do. Like, that, because you think, well, wait a minute. Video gaming and clubs. Like, well, Kashiro made that cool, number one, as far as how he, like, DJ stuff of his. It's done a lot of live performances of stuff like that. A lot of stuff with Streets of Rage. And there's Ho-Oh, not the Pokemon Ho-Oh. Yeah, because in this case, yeah, I can beat this Ho-Oh really easily and pull out a sword and do it, most likely, when I get to it. Unless he takes the Seryu sword, named after the sword. Eh. Damn. But in that way, I mean, it is interesting to that, because you think, like, well, yeah, you know, you could just get into, like, a beat of that. Like, yeah, you know, just go the boom, boom. Yeah, it's gonna be great stuff. Yeah, you almost want to get start, get up and start dancing, honestly. I mean, I can't because of the element of this game, but I can imagine, you know, going into this. Or as, um, I remember when I was in college, actually, I was, uh, with some of my, uh, friends at that point. I used to have, like, a portable speaker, just to kind of, like, play my music sort of in public, that I could, you know, get away with playing in public. But you like, I can imagine, I think one of my, uh, college roommates said specifically, like, you know, I can imagine you going into the hookah bar, you, you with that speaker putting on some sound garden and yelling, Chris Cornell rocks. It's like, yeah, that's totally something I would do. And another person who unfortunately is no longer with us. We're going to Element of Lost, which actually is going to go a little bit with the next level when it comes to music as far as that. But yeah, we have uh, Ibis and, uh, yeah, not the Ibis from Piling 64, and Sparrow and Hale, and yeah, they all have they have names, which is cool to see that. So 
Yeah, we did Batman Forever that had the enemy names. These do make a little more sense to a certain degree. All right, yeah, Ibis, you're going down. Move. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not Ibis as a mention of Bioing 64 for saying, All right! They're like, yeah, no, sorry, you're dying. Yeah. Oh, stop it! It definitely gets frantic. You do have, this feels like, yeah, we're getting toward the end, and yeah, Ibis is to die. I'm sorry. You go, Root! And you know, all the enemies here. Also, that's the other thing to differentiate with uh, Final Fight. The Genesis was able to uh, have multiple enemies on screen. Many, many, many. Much more than uh, even Final Fight had. And here's Soya, who's like uh, Jack from the beginning of the game. He does have an endless supply of knives. Yeah, Henry, yeah, slash, slash, slash. Alright, come on, guys. Oh, yeah, okay. That was close. Like, I thought I could get him. Oh, wait. Yeah, so, yeah, just stabbing him. Eh. Yeah, and there's no blood in this one. Actually, uh... I don't think three... Actually, no, there's no blood in any of these, I don't think. Even, uh, three and four. Three and four had... Or, three had other reasons as far as, uh... I guess the, uh... Fine. The first two didn't have a rating, because did, the rating system didn't exist. The third one is MA-13, so it's the equivalent of the teen rating. And, uh, four is teen rating. Anyway. All right, we're top of the, uh... We're at the top of the, uh, elevator. But yeah, we got robots. Which will come into play when we play the third game, but uh, for now we have a uh, particle and eh, molecule. All right. Yeah, I hope you remember your, uh, I guess your uh, science classes from like fourth, fifth, and sixth grade of like what's a molecule, what's a particle, or maybe your college biology potentially. Yeah, they have the maces and they have the lasers, so be careful uh, getting hit by those. And also you gotta be careful when you hit them because I believe they die before, uh, before they hit zero as far as their health. At least we've seen on the test, I noticed that. And when that happens, they'll explode, they can hurt you. In fact, I think I had something happen. Well, two things pretty funny that happen, I can do stitches in of what they are with the recording I took in the Switch version, which is... I got hit at the last minute when I killed the last one of these, and I just got hit with the explosion just falling in the air. And then the other one was... Uh, I grabbed, uh, I think it was Ibis or Sparrow down there. Okay, there's the explosion. Yeah, be careful, because the explosion can hurt you. I grabbed them, and it looked like I wasn't necessarily even grabbing them. I'll put the uh, edits in for them about... Mm, here. Alright, so yeah, Molecule, you're going down. Boom. Yeah, he's off screen, so yeah, he died. All right, that's stage seven. We are almost done. Hmm. This is a short game. You know what you're doing, and somehow I'm doing well. Maybe it's because I gave myself one extra life. Or I practiced it all week. That might be the other thing. Yo, look at that. Uh, 614,320 points. But that's getting reset when I die here. This is stage eight, by the way. We are at the final area. We are at the Syndicate Stronghold, which is not an island. And let me tell you something. Before I start going on this, and you do have a time limit, so be careful. It's not going to run out unless you try to make it run out. Unless you play the dual mode, in which case it's going to run out really quickly. It's just like, yeah, let me uh, brush my hair off. We were talking earlier on the show, as far as you know, the element of loss of people this week. I mentioned that with Kevin Conroy, Gallagher, and other people, as far as that. And I'll tell you, I like first of all going on this. On my lunch break, after my lunch break, when I was going back to work, I had, I'm at, I'm at a job, I'm able to do things where I have my music on my uh, earbuds going. I was actually listening to the soundtrack of this game. I was listening to this piece of music you're hearing right here. Which is a remix of three pieces of music from this franchise. The opening of this game, the opening of the first game, and uh, round eight from the last game. And it was something that was really getting me into an emotional mood. You feel this element. Right here it feels like we're getting close to the end of this game. We're going to be getting Mr. X. We're going to be saving Adam. But it also is that idea of... It kind of made me feel surprisingly sad. I mean, maybe it was also going the element of uh, Kevin Conroy's one element. And I guess also just the thought of, as I mentioned last week, someone I know... Her brother died very unexpectedly. It made me think of that very deeply because of the fact that my brother's birthday was actually this week. Uh, and in that case, I was thinking, like, you know what? what it might have been... It, who, who knows? Something could have happened to him or somebody else as well. And, like, the idea of how am I feeling for who I know who went through this. And people who are going through this. We go through loss all the time, it seems like, as far as that. Just for various reasons. And listening to this, it made me think that, okay, I don't know. It just got me in this really melancholy mood in a very natural way. Especially you hear that ding, 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 ding. When I heard that, I was like, I almost had a tear in my eye. It's, it's just beautiful. I'll tell you that. As far as it, with this game, the fact it's able to put you in that atmosphere 
And in that case, me thinking about that and saying, like, you know, being able to pull an emotion out that way, especially of music from a game from 30 years ago, you think that, oh yeah, chip to music, can it have that connection? Uh, yes, absolutely can. This is just one of many examples. All right, by the way, if you get grabbed, you can sort of get out of that by using your special move, but not always. Well, there's Bear Jr. All right, and you do hear the element of uh, stage H, the or you have an element of it in this piece of music. I love it so much. We're almost there. We are going to get there. We are going to beat um, Mr. X. I'm going to get a game over, by the way, here, but that's fine because I have uh, three continues. Or two. But all right. We had zero. That's game over. But I have uh, other continues, and uh, the fact that I lost them all here is fine. You can put in your name. We'll put in uh, short for the show, super old game, because there's one, uh, yeah, there's only three letters, that's your initials, I guess. Continue, yeah, you can hit game over, I'm not hitting game over. All right, continue. You're gonna select player, you know what, um... Uh, last time, uh, when I got game over, I pulled out Axel. Fine, when I died, I got, I pulled Axel, you know. I'll show the other characters, uh, specifically later. Let's, uh, run Blaze. Run Blaze the whole game. And so I'm probably gonna play the Japanese version anyway. I may as well just get into that. And we'll play somebody else. But I said, also show off the other characters, because they're worth showing off. It does change the dynamics of how this game operates, and also the idea of how you want to play it. So, in that case, uh, going to one thing, I think this came up with the first game. We're finding, uh, Kongo. If Vulture... Ugh, okay, good. I got the jump on Vulture, the recovery on him. Is that... You can kind of get good with any character you want to play as, and it kind of goes to style of yourself, because they all have different attributes. And you feel that more in this one than even in the last game. And you have four characters in this, so you have more abilities to, uh, you know, experiment. Yeah, in that case, yeah, he's blocking. No! Okay, good. I timed it just right. I think I'm gonna be getting that timed out. Alright, boom. Yeah, I think I just do that next time. Oop. Okay, yeah, if you hit right when it hits the ground, up and see, you'll be good. Kosho! Yeah, just hit that. I do love doing it. For years, I was wondering, what is she even saying? But then I looked at the manual for the US version and uh, found it. Alright, he's done. Yeah, this, by the way, is our last elevator section. So he's taking up right where we need to go. Up to uh, Mr. X's uh, fortress. Oh! And there's not Souther again. That is, uh, Nail. He has nails and things. He's gonna cut us up. Oh! Or throw us. And also, by the way, when you do get game over, since your score does reset, that also means that the uh, elements of uh, lives for points also resets. So I get to 10,000 points above where I am now. I'm gonna get another life. Ow! Stop it! You just kick him. Yeah, also, you do want to sort of keep him in a distance, only because of the fact that, yeah, you know, he can grab you when you're really close. Oh! Ah, oh, crap. You get that, ah! as far as her scream. Which actually does sound a bit, uh, because, well, remember, we played the Sega CD version of the first one, which sounded much crisper, but yeah, this is what the sound is like as far as this. But for Genesis, it's pretty amazing, especially from, uh, 1992. Alright, go! Yeah, in this case, yeah, don't even try to... To punch him, pretty, or don't even try to grab him unless you get lucky. And also take advantage. Oh, fine, I guess do try to grab him when does that uh, spin across the uh, screen? In some cases, or if he runs into your hands. Okay, so he ran into my hands, but then he grabbed me. Yeah, uh, almost. That would be great if I hit him out of the air. Damn. Yeah, it wasn't two lives to him alone. It's like, oh no. All right, got him. Okay. I think with uh, the other continue I have, I think I should be fine. Honestly, that's the hardest one. Yeah, he's hard to beat as far as that, but I can take care of him. All right, Phoenix, let's take him. Oh, right, uh, not Abadede. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, his name appears. Uh, Z, was it? Z Kusano. Oh, okay, it looked like... What was that? It looks like I was behind the scenery there. All right. This is a little easier than Abadede because he is in a, uh, an enclosed area. I'm not showing that because I'm getting myself killed. Yeah, fine. I'm going to try and see if I can't stun lock him. Sometimes you bust out of it. Fine, I'll just punch him in the crotch. Oh, and kick him, I guess, at the end. It's like, fine, all right. Yeah, it doesn't look right, I guess, but, like, fine, I'm doing it. Because if I get a game over here, I don't want to start... Fine, I don't have to start this game over. I just have to put in a code. All right, fine, he is dead. And I got a life. Fantastic. All right, here is Mr. X, but before we fight Mr. X, well, we have enemies to fight. Also, in the Japanese version, I'll probably show this this way. Uh, he has a cigar. He's smoking. Or a cigarette. Yeah, cigar. He is smoking here. Uh, our version doesn't have that. 
Defeat the enemies here, but yeah, his uh, right hand man here. This is Shiva. He hurts. He has two life bars as well, and he has a uh, flame kick, and he can block, so be careful hitting him. No! Yeah, try to bust him out. Uh, yeah, I know, I, I know it takes uh, health away using that special, but it does block him out. It does do a lot of damage. All right, come on. Yeah, hopefully he'll jump into my into my uh, leg. My feet. Okay, he won't always. So yeah, the idea of this is that the AI is good enough and that you can't always hit him. All right, I got him. But we are not quite done yet. One last challenge. Mr. X, like last time you brought a machine gun to the battle and he will uh, pistol whip you with it or uh, machine gun whip you or butt you, hit you with the butt of the gun. You can grab him because remember, he's not necessarily a fighter as far as like a pugilist anyway. And he does have the gun thing. It does kill his uh, his uh, people. So it's like, yeah, at this point it doesn't matter. He's like, yeah, he just wants you dead. Oh. All right. All right, and this is uh, his revenge. We're gonna get him taken care of. All right, yeah. You took our friend. You have to go down again. No. Oh. And the enemies will keep coming like in the first game. So if you want to grab him and just do the toss back, which by the way, not every character, not every character can do that. That case, whoa, there he goes. And then there he goes, that way, boom. In that case, you could still hit him when he comes back. Yeah, there you go. Okay, it looks like I... I'm gonna look back on that. It looks like I maybe just hit him. All right, yeah, boom. One more uh, round of this. By the way, to avoid the, fi the gun fire, Brit stay up where he is. All right, uh, damn. Okay, laugh it up. Uh. All right, one more. Got him. All right, we're done. For now. Uh, yeah, I beat the game in uh, an hour and 15 minutes. We're not done with the show. And uh, in this case, I guess it's good we didn't do the Genesis cartridge otherwise. Uh, aside from the uh, dual mode, that'll be end. All right. Hmm. And I like Streets of Rage 1. There is only one ending for this. Streets of Rage 2... Uh, or, yeah, Streets of Rage 1 only had one ending. Or, it had two endings... If you're playing two-player, uh, this one's only one. All right, fine. We, uh, did get our high score again. So I guess you put this on top of what we had from, uh, the first element. All right, got him. All right. So there he is. There is Mr. X on the ground once more. You get those great Genesis transitions as we're going to the credits, uh, and that is Streets of Rage 2, ladies and gentlemen. We are not done with, uh, this game, though. Cause I'm gonna show the Japanese version of it. Yeah, that's usually what it is. The beat ups are so short, we're not gonna usually stop with one run unless I have no other way to show. There is Adam. Yeah, at the beginning of the game, uh, the cutscene didn't indicate this. He was uh, tied up in chains and they had the picture of uh, uh, Mr. X saying that, yeah, I have your friend. Yeah, I'm taking over the city, you're done. But uh, yeah, no, he's not, he is done. There we go, there is uh, there's Skate. We'll see Skate. I'll show him as well as Axel helping out Adam. So there's Adam Hunter. Uh, we got him back, and yeah, it is a very happy reunion with a great piece of uh, credits music going on for this. And a great game for sure. I'm glad in this case I was able to beat this one, you know, without getting game over and giving him to use a code. And there is uh, Blaze again. Like, yeah, him and or her and uh, Max give him a thumbs up. So I guess in that way, I'll tell you, I guess I'm better at Streets of Rage 2 than I am at Streets of Rage 1. Actually, Streets of Rage 1 is a little easier in some ways, just because of some of the conventions of it. And also the fact that, um, actually, the final level is a lot shorter in this game than it is in Streets of Rage 1. So that has something to do with it. And also maybe because I played it more, but alright, remember, we are on, a, on, a, on an island where his island base is, I don't know if I indicated that. Actually, you saw that we fought fought Souther. You actually can see like a castle in the distance. Yeah, we are uh, stuck here, but we are calling in for help. Because remember, our police force uh, friends, they're not on the police force anymore, but now that we said, hey, we took care of uh, Mr. X, we made a phone call, and uh, there they are to get us home. All right, so yeah, a new day is dawning on the city. A new day on the island for uh, the next adventures of... Uh, of, of, of our main characters. I was gonna say, like, wait a second, there's Axel, there's Blaze, who are in the next game. And then, yeah, the star there, by the way, for round means that you beat the game. And if you hit the A button, you can also see how many KOs you got. So, uh, Chasm22, to go what you're saying, saying, 
man, uh, Mr. X and the Syndicate have a lot of uh, bad guys to send out for you to fight. So, before I got the game over, it was 398, and then it's 29. So it's about, uh, 427 enemies that he sent after us. But it was like, yeah, we destroyed him. And, uh, we'll destroy him again, but before we do that, I want to show off the duel mode. I have another controller uh, connected on the system. Yeah, you could do, uh, you could do duels on any of the levels in the game as a two-player mode. You can also do the co-op of two players as well. So you ever played, uh, Game B, I believe it is, in, uh, Double Dragon on NES? It's gonna look a little familiar. You can choose the same character as well. You can choose Axel and, uh, Skate and Blaze and Max. You know what? I will show Blaze once more as far as that, because in, uh, in dual mode, you can actually do one thing you cannot do in, uh, what is it? In main game, which is play uh, same character, and you choose uh, one screen of uh, any of the eight stages to play. They give you one screen from. I'll show stage five because it's kind of an interesting one. You turn on specials on or off, so you hit the A button. You can use that or not. I'll show it briefly. It's on. Yeah, they put you in one area, and then you do have a uh, different color palette swap there. Yeah, she has the blue. I do like the blue actually of uh, Blaze that way. But here you do have the enemies throwing the bombs out, so it makes it difficult to you know avoid getting yourself hit. And they do give you items on the ground, so you can use that to, you know, destroy your competition a little bit. And then, it's, uh, best of three, by the way. And the time goes down really quickly, actually, in this mode. Actually, it goes down... I didn't know this until I was doing, uh, the audio check for this today. It goes down by increments of three. In fact, what I think I will do, just the purpose of this... I will show it going down to nothing, just because... I don't know... I don't think I showed time over, or time running out for the main game. Alright, fine. I'm getting myself blown up. I could also... You could also grab, uh, your opponent that way. Actually, you know, I'm wondering about one thing, which is I grab them, and then I hit the, uh, button for that. Okay, fine. I hit the A button as far as it... It's not like in two-player for co-op, where you can basically... You can grab the other player, you can hurt the other player feasibly, but if you do a hold on them, they can do an attack out to, uh, hurt the enemies. So you can kind of have, like, combo attacks. Ow. Fine. I guess I'm gonna let myself get killed by the bombs. I do like that they add that, and it is a small thing. It's like the uh, dual mode that the Golden Axe games have, admittingly. And I believe I will uh, break out of this eventually. Oh no, we're gonna. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Which actually sounds like uh, Miss Pac Man. Actually, even the uh, pickup of the uh, items goes like. Ooh, whoop. Actually, it is out of Pac Man, interestingly enough. Alright, fine. Let's uh, destroy my uh, blue doppelganger. I do like the blue, the. Oh, that was weird. Looked like it just disappeared. Alright, she's lying down in front of the knife and the pipe, but alright. And you're gonna also quit. Um, I'm gonna quit. I'm trying to think of how I want to handle this. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll show each character until I get a game. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. Also, one thing, since I'm using the, uh, Genesis Mini 2's controller, the 6-button controller, you hit the mode button on that. You can do the, uh, game re- or you can bring up the menu instantly, which is awesome. You can do it on the Genesis, mo uh, the Genesis Mini 1 or 2. I'm going to reset on the game. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. So I show off the characters, and I'll show the Japanese version, just because I think it's worth uh, going into that. I'm going into more stuff with discussion, anything you got chat, uh, just feel free to hit me with it. Pretty much open mic night. But dang it, every show is open mic night. We're running in one life. We'll go on hardest. There's actually one thing I didn't mention. Uh, depending on the difficulty you're running, let's play as Axel. Actually, this also cover every one of the continues, because you get three continues for it. Uh, you get more points at the end of the levels for your level bonus. Also, there's the Randapa! Yeah, which, uh, for years people were saying, like, what is he saying? That's what he's saying. The, uh, manual of the U.S. indicates it. He was this little fist attack there, and then also the, uh, dragon run, which is, uh, like this. Where is that? Yeah, like that. Boom. He's a little s slower, though. He just still have the throwback. Actually, yeah, he- Oh, yeah, he can throw backwards. I think it's only, uh, Axel and Blaze who can throw backwards, I believe. I did enjoy the uh, great elements of the streets again, and the great music. It's, I can't say enough about this soundtrack. This is a legendary soundtrack for good reason. Also, okay, fine. Uh, one other thing, it looks like they're giving you enemies that have uh, bigger health bars, I'm noticing. Yeah, the Y signals, or the yellow signals, and the red signals, they have much more health on Hardest, and also on Mania. Alright, yeah, even that, though, that way, though, I can still avoid getting myself thrown. Also, I guess for that, the time is a little bit more of a, a threat here because of the fact that, you know, you'll be fighting the enemies for a long amount of time. Yeah, the Donovans have way more health. So, all right, fine. That's the other way of uh, why this game is harder when you're going on the hard difficulties. Not only are the enemies going to hurt you more, not only in my case, I set it to one life, but also 
they have higher life bars. Yeah, time over might potentially be on the menu, depending on how that is. At least until, uh, Street Rage 3, when they get rid of the time element altogether. Alright. Actually, in that case, I'm kind of wanting to, to die, weirdly enough, just because I want to show another character. And I'll pick, a new, I'll pick another character when I do, um, the Japanese version. Actually, one, well, sort of. It's actually in the Japanese version. Actually, to go into that, I'll mention that. I mentioned the thing with the cigar that, uh, Mr. X has. Also, uh, some of the names of the characters are different. And also, um, there's an upskirt shot of, uh, Blaze, actually, in that game. It's not in ours. So you do that jump kick, the one that, uh, with foot, the foot flying forward. You can see a little bit of a pixel that are her, um, any specific. Do that. I mean, I guess I could sort of show that, or I'll, if I can't, if I don't show that as far as the, uh, actually, no, I'll, I'll just start the duel there, and then we'll go in the uh, actual game with somebody else, and we'll do it that way. Hmm. Okay, yeah, oh, crap, I got a life. I didn't want to get a life, actually. So, in fact, I tell you what I'll do, I just won't pick up the, um, the health items. I can alt head. It almost sounds like alternate or something. Yeah, just uh, keep going, keep kicking them, and keep punching them. And that's, as I said, the other thing that goes into what I was mentioning, which is that, hey, if you want to pick a character, you're not necessarily going to be at a disadvantage completely, depending on who you pick, as long as you understand how they operate. Actually, I think, like, first, when we were playing uh, Street Rage 1, I think you said when you played Street Rage 1, you played as Axel, usually. I don't know if it's the same with this one, but feel free to go on that if you'd like to. Or more on uh, Super Cyborg as well, or anything else we've mentioned so far tonight. Of which we've had a lot of good elements going on with discussion for the show. Eh. Alright, come on. I kind of want to get myself hurt a little bit just so I can get rid of my life. Although it is the first level, so yeah, even though with that, that's going to be the idea. I'm going to have to keep, I'm gonna have to call tonight and keep falling asleep. Uh, don't worry about it. Like first, it is good to see you tonight for sure. Hope you're doing well, and uh, we'll be here next week for the game you uh, asked for. You want to see... Uh, Magic Quest starring Mickey Mouse, we'll have it next week. Have a good sleep. I mean, I get that as well, because actually, I was kind of feeling tired coming on the show a little bit, sort of. But, that's the idea. Thank you so much for uh, showing up on the show, and thank you for adding so much to the program, as you always do. As that the show will be here in a couple days with the edit, for sure, so you will not miss a thing. Have a great night. I send my uh, best to everybody you know, and all of your family, and everybody like that, and uh, take care. Alright, so boom, boom with them. Oh, also, okay, also, that's the other thing. Jack has uh, two life bars in this. All right, so the enemy bosses do have more uh, more health going on specific, so that's the idea. All right, boom. This is that. <laughs> oh, I missed. Whoa. Yeah, time change is honestly messing me up, so uh, good night, everybody. Yeah, I get that for sure, so uh, no problem. Uh, have, yeah, enjoy uh, having a nice uh, rest for that, for sure. Ow. Yeah, also, by the way, if you pick the knife up and there's another knife over it, you basically keep picking it up and it actually will go through, you know, losing the item. Right, yeah, stop. Boom. Alright, fine. Axel's done. Uh, we'll just put in anything. I have a continue. Let's uh, show Skate off. Alright, Skate is different. You do hit the, uh, you double tap the uh, direction. He does a dash. He's the only character in this game that can do that, so he's the fastest character in the game. He has that dive forward. He is not the most powerful, and, uh, most powerful uh, combatant, though. And he is on roller skates because, of course, that's the idea of cool kids in the 90s. Right, oh, damn. Yeah, but I always want to take care of Jack. Also, the other thing, he can't throw, but when you get on top of him, or he, he can't throw the enemies because he's that, not that strong that way. But you can get on top of him and cause a lot of punches like he just did. Actually, his fast movement does change the dynamics of this game for that reason. I guess also the other thing is that, hey, clearly the people who made this realized, wait a minute, all right, fine. We may as well have that running as far as it for a uh, actual thing. Because, by the way, when we get to Streets of Rage 3, you do have run. Any character can do the run by doing the double tap. Although, you also run into cases where the enemies... I mean, not the enemies. The, uh, the characters will have different running speeds depending on their attributes. So, they do balance it out that way. Whoa! Also, his attack is a little different. When you stand still, he does the, uh, he does the break dance kick. When you're doing the... Uh, doing forward and the uh, A button. He does that corkscrew kick where he jumps up in the air. It's actually going to be good to kind of get yourself uh, aimed or actually kind of sort of do a dodge a little bit. So, actually, he kind of has a dodge mechanic in this game a little bit. Sort of. But, uh, yeah, he's dead. 
Yeah, Fortune's skate couldn't handle it, but alright, Max. Max is the biggest and heaviest character, so he's slow, but he hurts. He also has the uh, Mega Man 3 slide when you do uh, forward, forward, and B button. And also, he doesn't have a throw. He can also, he can do a jump that way. He also can't vault over uh, enemies when you hit the C button. You grab him and you hit the C button, you just jump over him. But he's like Mike Hagar on uh, Final Fight in the sense that he's big, but he'll just grab him. You can jump up in the air and then smash him down on the ground. He also has the kick that way. And he likes to do the uh, karate chops and the wrestling element. So, fair way. I mean, okay, fine. I guess he is the Mike Hagar of this franchise. I guess this is clearly when uh, Sage was noticing that and saying, fine, we're going to have our... Uh, element of uh, a Final Fight referencing this way, which is uh, fitting because Mike Hagar also is a wrestler, as we saw with uh, Saturday, Night, Saturday Night Slam Masters, which you should play that at some point, um, which there are ports of that on Super Nintendo and Genesis. I think the arcade version is in the Capcom Arcade Stadium uh, 2, I believe. I think it is. Or it's the first one. It's one of those. I'll put down here which one it is because I don't know. All right, yeah, Barman. I do love that attention detail right there. Yeah, the guy in the bar there is just, uh, you know, wiping out the cup or, I guess, shaking up the drink. Yeah, there she is at the bar. It's like, yeah, like, yeah, can I show you a good time, miss? Uh, no, uh, I can't. I'm going to have to beat you up. Yeah, because she's like, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't take to that nicely. Oh, all right, fine. She also works in the syndicate, so it would never work anyway. Yeah, because, like, when Max finds that out, it's like, if that was a secret, it's like, yeah, that wouldn't work. Well, actually, I don't know as far as relationship elements in Streets of Rage as far as characters. I don't think... There really is much indicated in that, honestly. Unless 4 goes into it. Or unless uh, 3 goes into it. Alright, fine. Uh, I'm shocked, Herb. Alright, so that's game over. Mm. Yeah, so my best is still bad. But I still sort of placed on hardest, so like, okay, fine, I'll take that. Alright, so I'm going to show the Japanese version off, because hey, it may as well uh, be an element of that. Alright, so to do that, uh, actually like we did with the Gunstar Heroes, go into settings, languages, you can set it to anything you want, so you can set it to, uh, French, Italian, German, Spanish, traditional Chinese, and Korean, or set it to Japanese, and then go back outwards. Okay, and you get the Japanese versions, and it includes, well, unless they didn't have one, like, uh, Earthen Gym, but yeah, Streets of Rage, here's the thing about Streets of Rage, it is not called... Streets of Rage in Japan. It is called, let me find it here, Bare Knuckle. Bare Knuckle 2, actually. That's what this is. Yeah, it came out on um, January 14th. So actually, the US got this before Japan did, interestingly enough. Which I'd have thought would have been the opposite. You think that usually back then that was the idea. And the story in this one's the same, unlike Streets of Rage 3. And when we get to Streets of Rage 3, that's actually going to be an interesting distinction because the story in that one for Japan is totally different than the one we got. Hmm. Not to mention the elements that they censored out, which, as I said, we're going to show those off. Because, as I mentioned when I said that the, they censored the Bare Knuckle 3 that was in the Genesis Mini 2, we're going to show that off on the show, and if you're offended by what you see, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to, you know... That's not as important as showing off the game fully as it is, because I actually do have respect for all of you in the audience that way. Because, hey, there are a lot of games that you'll come to is like, this is kind of eh, iffy... As far as that, but as I mentioned with Shadow Hearts, you kind of want to see the whole thing, see what the element is. And actually, with Streets of Rage 3, the thing with that is that they released that version as it was for Jap the, Jap the Japanese version before. The SVC Streets of Rage collection has it. So I was like, wait a second, they don't have it for this one, and also they cut the level out. So I was like, it's not even they got rid of the character that was so objectionable that is not in the US version for that reason. I'm like, okay, fine, the US version, I get it. And here it is, Bare Knuckle 3, so it is a little different. And actually, you know what? Oh, yeah, they call fine. They call it the dual battling. In fact, we will show some battling briefly. I will show, uh... I'll show the blaze. I'll show both blazes again. Let's go to, uh, stage eight. Also, it's still in English, so yeah, this is Japanese as far as it, but that's the idea. All right, fine. Let me show you this. You do jump, you do that kick. You actually do... She has a little bit of skirt there. And actually, same with, uh, the one-player version. Yeah, you see right there. So there you go. There is your, uh, element of that. Alright, you know, let's get the, uh... Let's be fair this way, the blue, uh, version of Blaze. I do like the way that sprite is, honestly. The blue works for her. And actually, fitting to indicate the dress color, because when we get to Streets of Rage 3, we'll indicate this. Amongst the many, 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 many changes they made with the US version, they changed her outfit. The red outfit she's wearing here, by default, 
is not the outfit she's wearing. They changed it to uh, gray for some reason. That I didn't get. It's like, wait a second, you released two here the same way with this fine, and that wasn't a problem. I'm fine, they cut this out, or cut uh, that out. But either way, I was like, wait a second, what was that about? So they made a lot of changes to that. Okay, fine, well, let's uh, do a quit out, by the way. All right, let's do... Fine, you know, let's... Uh... Fine, let's do the four again, run normal, and go exit, and we'll fight again. Let's fight with... Uh... Yeah, let's fight with Axel, why not? I mean, I showed everybody off as far as it, so I think uh, Axel's probably gonna be the best way to go. All right, so we've seen this game before. The only things you're going to see different, really, are uh, the names of some of the characters, as we mentioned, and also the Japanese text for the story. I think the voices are the same, from what I understand. I don't think they change much as far as almost the graphics, but, I mean, you'll see. I mean, hey, just, since this game is short enough, it justifies us doing this twice. And I guess to go into that, uh, for our next show, our next show is also going to be pretty short, because Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse is not a long game, from what I understand, but actually... I've never beaten it, so I actually have to practice that game over the week so I don't look uh, totally awful on it. And that one doesn't have a modern re-release that I own. Oh, fine. It, it's on the Game Boy Advance as well, but I only own a, I only have it on the Super Nintendo, so that's the only one I can uh, really practice. But it shouldn't be too hard to do that, and we're going to be doing, as we mentioned, two years ago we did uh, Castle of Illusion, which is on this uh, unit, by the way. We played that and had the, 20, or the 30th anniversary to the day of the Genesis Mickey Mouse game that started it for them, and uh, now we're doing it for Nintendo's uh, from Capcom specific developed. In the meantime, yeah, let's uh, keep going down the streets again. Chat, feel free to go into anything you want to go into as we continue down the streets of rage again. I'm having a great time playing this game. I think this, this game is so much fun. And that's why I just think it's such a great beat-em-up, really. And I'll say this, I mean, yeah, look, I think you probably should play every game in this franchise, honestly. Also looks like, uh, another thing I didn't know this with Axel. He does a straight stab with the knife as opposed to, uh, Blaze, who does the, uh, you know, the stab and then the, uh, cut down, I should say. So she actually kind of has two hits with it, so that's one, uh, advantage. Yeah, as I was saying, you should play all of these specifically. There's something about the way 2 operates that makes it so special, and I think might be the reason why it tends to be seen as the best game in the series. And I probably agree with that, but that's not to say that I don't like one. I really like four of what I played at four. I think four is awesome. And three, here's the thing about three is that for years, three was the game that people were thinking that was the black sheep of the franchise. Maybe also people resented three because we didn't get a fourth game for 26 years after it. Hmm. And the censoring, I guess, of it specifically. But even that aside, and they changed some stuff with it, it's definitely a lot different. And people said, hey, the music is kind of weird. I mean, it's not bad music, it's very frantic, as we heard uh, for this one, for some of those tracks. You hear that for sure in that one. But it's also been a fascinating thing, understanding or talking to people this way, saying, uh, people who played Streets of Rage that I know, what game in the series is their favorite? Of which, uh, actually, I'll, I'll go on the specific. I know that, actually, because as I mentioned, Emetics is playing, the, is going to be on when we play Streets of Rage 3. Because actually, uh, that's his favorite one. He loves Streets of Rage 3, and I said to him, we, in fact, when we play, we've been doing Parasite Eve, I said to him specifically, I said, hey, I want, we're going to do that. We're doing the back and forth between Final Fight 3, or Final Fight, uh, and Streets of Rage in general, because well, three, Final Fight 3 is the next one we're doing. I said, do you want to call dibs on the game? Do you want to be in on the show for that? And he said, absolutely. And I'm like, okay, great. So it's showing that idea of, okay, somebody who thinks the third game is the best, would you think, like, maybe... Wait, did he catch the knife when I threw it? Oh, okay, maybe not. He didn't. I was looking backwards. He was just in his uh, state of that. Also, it looked like... Okay, I slid backwards when I did the Grand Upper. Which is weird, like... Because, alright. Hold on. Because I, I did that before when I was doing the uh, first run-through. I, I did, yeah, I did that, and then I did it backwards for some reason. I don't know how I did that. Which is weird. Alright, fine. But as I said, it's been fascinating to see what games in this franchise are the favorites of people. Is it? A lot of people will say two. And I probably agree two, although uh, four is definitely a great one. And one. I, I, got, I love one. I know one is the most antiquated, but it still holds up terrifically well, despite the fact that it's now uh, 31 years old. I can't believe that. And 30 years for this one next year. And it still feels just as fresh and fun as it did when it came, came out back in the early 90s. 
But it's interesting just to get that idea. And actually, uh, Edwack, as I mentioned, uh, who's going to be on when we do uh, Guitar Man uh, next year. He said his only experience with this franchise was with the fourth game. But I was saying to him specifically, yeah, there are a bunch of great games in this franchise. Actually, all of them, really. And they're all available on Switch as it is. So that's that idea that you have access to it. And actually, with Switch... Well, 2 is on the Switch Online Expansion Pack, but right now, as uh, I'm recording this, that's the only Streets of Rage game that's up there. I know Sega's been adding a bunch of games to that service, but 1 and 3 have not been added to that. Interesting enough, I'm surprised on uh, 1. I would have thought that would have been up there by now. But uh, yeah, they're not there, so you have to buy the uh, Sega Genesis Classics Collection to play 1 and 3. And the reason, by the way, I didn't use that version, just to go into that for this, is because... That collection has button lag to it, and there's some elements of the emulation that are kind of off. Not horrible, not Sega Smashback Volume 1 for uh, this game. That's way worse. That's the worst port of this, without a question. That I know of, anyway. But they were kind of off, so I'm like, yeah, we'll play the best one we can. I, said, I could do it on Switch Online Expansion Pack, but I kind of said, for variety's sake, I want to do this, because I was, was going to do Genesis normally. I couldn't, so I said, all right, fine, we'll do it this way. And also, because actually when I was doing my test with the Switch version, I've said that the Genesis em emulation on Switch Online Expansion Pack is immaculate, and it mostly is. But I've also noticed that for that game, there were some artifacts that seemed like they were kind of, I don't know, going in and out as far as some elements of the graphics, and I don't know why that was. And I actually noticed that when Earthworm Jim came out on the service about a month ago, because they put the Genesis version up for that. But I was kind of surprised to see that because most of the stuff on that has been emulated great. It's not the Nintendo's 4 element where it had a lot of problems starting, although actually now it's way better, because Mario Party 1 and 2 got emulated really well. I think it's emulated better than the N64 game. So I think they got into that, and they really were understanding now how to handle it. And I guess also contrast with another thing, which, I mean, I guess I may as well go into my thing with... Mm, uh, the Genesis Mini 2, which is that that's a case where... I bought that. It was a little over 100 bucks because they released it here, but they basically just put the Japanese unit into a box and had the different games for the U.S. on it. And it still had to... I mean, it only is available through Amazon, but they are importing it from Japan, so I got a package from DHL saying, like, hey, this got shipped overseas. Like, okay, that was kind of weird. And so in that case, the tax on it was a bit more, so like $120 as far as the unit. And... It's a deal, given the fact that there are games on that are worth multiple hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars totaled up. I mean, just for Crusader Senti alone and Shining Force CD that are insanely expensive and Warsong, that thing is totally worth it. But it's also a question when I got it, I was realizing the emulation is not one-to-one -one on a lot of this stuff. And it's M2 did the, did the ports, and usually they're dead on. They did the ports on this stuff, on this unit. Which are mostly perfect, with a couple extensions. I mean, there is a sound delay that on this unit, which I did not actually realize until it was brought up with the second one. I realized, actually, that second one has elements with its sound kind of off as far as it seems a bit muffled. And that's even with them giving you the uh, ability to run the Genesis 2 sound uh, driver for some of the games. The Genesis uh, Model 1 one... Seemed a little uh, muffled a bit, but that was kind of a weird thing. But hello, uh, hello, Nocturne. Good to see you tonight. Uh, we're playing Streets of Rage 2 for the Sega Genesis. Well, actually, we beat it already. We're playing it again. We're playing the Japanese version, of which there's not a whole lot of differences except for the panty shot of uh, Blaze, the uh, cigarette in the mouth of uh, Mr. X at the end of the game, and uh, what was it? The name of uh, Max, I believe. Or no, uh, of, of uh, uh, Skate. Uh, he's named Sammy in Japanese version, but Eddie. Hope you're doing well, Nocturne. So good to see you on the show. Feel free to go into memories you have on Streets of Rage 2. Anything on beat-em-ups or anything on games you're playing or games of anything. Yeah, feel free to go into it because, yeah, we've explained how the game operates. I think you've seen this game. Am um, I right? I think I might have shown you this. Uh, feel free to let me know if I haven't, but um, if you haven't seen it, this is a great game. Uh, this is one of the best beat-em-ups on the Genesis. One of the best games on the Genesis, uh, flat out. So, yeah, if you have not played it, play it. This is a terrific game. And, uh, given all the collections it's in, you might actually have a copy from somewhere, for all I remember. But it's good to see you as we're going down the street, or going down the street and down the bridge as we're seeing the bikers, uh, get in the case, yeah, damn Blade. Not the Blade of Marvel, he's like, yeah, no, 
Yeah, just hit him with the uh, Grand Up. Uh, I, oh, oh, crap. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the uh, chicken before the screen transitions. Because I need health. I wasn't going to die, which should be okay. All right. Okay, fine. You know what? I take that back. I was saying the Switch Online expansion pack had artifact weird. Okay, I guess this version does too. And I guess the Genesis game does. <laughs> if I could get my Genesis version uh, running, because uh, Nocturne, since you're just jumping on, I'll indicate why we're using the Genesis Mini 1 to play this. Because I was going to use the Genesis cartridge. I couldn't. It was not running in my system. And I don't know why it wasn't. There's other games that ran okay. But I got this red box, or this red uh, screen, when I turn it on. I cleaned the thing. I blew it out with uh, compressed air. Nothing. Actually, a lot of Genesis games from 1992 I had that problem with. Sonic 2, uh, World of Illusion. Um, not Echo the Dolphin, really enough. But for some reason, like, yeah, that was not working. So it's making me a little concerned as far as if I have broken games potentially on my Genesis, or maybe it's my unit, or the way it's handling running the 32X, but I put these games in the 32X before, they were fine. Because, by the way, uh, since I have the 32X on top of my Genesis Model 1, it does pass through in every Genesis game except for Virtual Racing, because that used the SVP chip. They will run through the 32X, and you'll see that it's a Genesis game, so it shouldn't be a problem. So I don't know why that's going on with the with this one. Like, this is the one I wanted to show on the Genesis, but I think by me using this, I can show the Japanese version off and uh, get more of a complete element of Street Rage and also give a show that's not only an hour and 15 minutes long. I don't remember specific beat em ups I played or watched, but I've always had trouble learning how to play them. And that being said, I do enjoy watching people play them. I mean, that's the other thing I think with beat em ups is they can sometimes be fun to watch, you know, being played. And you're right, actually. Thank you for bringing it up. Let's talk about that because I was showing uh, before we jumped on the harder mode or the hardest mode. Although there's a hidden uh, difficulty of mania, which is insanely difficult. And actually, with a lot of the beat em ups, they can be pretty difficult in terms of understanding how they operate, being able to get enemies into a hit. Although, actually, uh, one of the beat em ups we're doing, the next beat em we're doing, which is going to be in about five weeks, we're doing Final Fight 3 for Super Nintendo. That's actually one of the easier ones. So. That actually is one of the more approachable beat-em-ups to come to, except it's a game that, uh, in its original form is $300, so, um... It's not easy to come to as far as a cost reason, unless you download on the Wii U Virtual Console or 3DS Virtual Console basically as soon as you can if you want to play that. But, as I said, I'll show that off and I will show the Wii U War Chest off when we play that in, uh, five weeks. Actually, it's gonna be the week after you and I play uh, Mega Man X4. I'm looking forward to playing that. But I get the idea as far as the beat-em-ups. I guess as far as uh, Streets of Rage is concerned, uh, I guess probably the easiest one would be maybe this one if you play, put it onto the easiest mode, or maybe 4. Because uh, Streets of Rage 4 is on modern systems, and this has been ported on a bunch of systems. It's on a lot of the new systems as it is. Yeah, 4 does get you into the mechanics very well, so it's something that you can kind of understand the mechanics of what it is, or also understand basically the patterns of the enemies, like Jet there. He keeps doing the dive towards me, and you can't get close, otherwise he'll uh, grab you and drop you down, it'll hurt. But if you can get him with a kick, you'll be good. So that's sometimes to be the thing about beat-em-ups, and honestly, I'll tell you, it's uh, interesting going to this. I did not really play a whole lot of beat-em-ups growing up. Oh, by the way, we were at the amusement park with Dreamer. If you've not heard this music, by the way, uh, Nocturne or anybody else in the chat, oh my god, this is some of the best music you're ever going to hear coming out of the Jets. We played Aladdin, or you and I, or fine, you played Aladdin for us back in July. This is another one. You want to add to the pile of great music in your Genesis games, but this is absolutely... If it's not the best music on the system, it's at least in the top ten. It is amazing. Oh, yeah, get off. If you get grabbed by them, uh, do a, do a uh, special move, which is on A button, which hurts you a little bit when you make contact with the enemy, but you also have the uh, double... Yeah, press forward, forward, and the B button, and do that. And that's the other thing also, because a lot of these do have button combinations in some ways. And we'll see what Streets Rage, or with, um, well, actually, we will see what with Streets Rage 3, when Emetics and I do that one. And we'll see that with Final Fight 3 in a couple weeks, too, because actually, in that case, since that's by Capcom, what they did with that one is they give you, uh, like, Street Fighter 2 moves as far as combinations, and there's actually going to be a lot of flashing lights on that one, despite the fact it's running on Wii, you think that, oh, yeah, they give them the graphics for it, but, um... Not entirely, you can still see them a bit, and I'll put warnings on that. But that being said, so they do kind of give a little bit of an element of... Because we mentioned this, the idea that, I guess, where's the line between a fighting game and a beat-em-up? And I guess the idea is that, with a fighting game, it's like maybe a one-on-one -one thing in some cases, maybe? 
but then also with a beat em up, you're kind of going back and forth, like all across the streets, and like, hey, here's enemies, beat em up, and then go on to the next thing. I'm so looking forward to play Mega Man X4, as am I. Uh, by the way, since you're here, if you want to go into elements of that or anything Mega Man or anything else you got going on, feel free to do that just to give a little bit of an idea to the chat. So it's fitting, uh, by the way, we're playing both the US and Japanese versions of this. This is a preview to the show you and I are going to be doing in uh, four weeks is that we're playing both the Japanese and the English versions. Uh, she has the Japanese version of Mega Man X4, and you've got that back hit. Actually, yeah, yeah, there, there's the back hit. I guess I did that very uh, effectively there. She has the Japanese version of Mega Man X4 on, on the Saturn, but also on the PlayStation. She's going on the PlayStation 1, and then when... She's a Play Zero doing that, and then when we're done, since I do have the Retro Tink 5X, we can just uh, do a swap out. We basically do the, um, if you're like in a pit crew when you go like to a NASCAR race or something, where you know they quickly get in there to, you know, refuel your car and put tires on. We're gonna do that to switch our console between her Japanese PlayStation 2 and her American one. And then I'm gonna play the American version of uh, Mega Man X4 with X. And it's worth doing that because the campaigns for the characters are totally different. And it does give a different feel to how they play, and uh, in that way, it's actually one of my favorite games in the X franchise, and us going back to the X franchise, which we have not actually touched in... Actually, almost two years since I did uh, Mega Man X2 back in January of last year. So, man, I can't believe it's been that long, but yeah, we're getting back to that for sure, and yeah, definitely a good one to come back to. And more 32-bit uh, elements going, because I realize, actually, a lot of the stuff we have on docket for the next uh, couple months is going to be stuff in, like, the PlayStation era, and actually also Saturn as well. Actually, next month, except for, um, except for Shadow Hearts and, uh, Final Fight 3, everything we're playing is going to be, uh, a 32 bit game, interesting enough. So definitely looking forward to that as well, and that's the other thing as well, because, hey, we'll get to stuff you want to see or stuff you want to be on, and we can make that happen. Mm. Yeah, we're slicing with the sword. Again, that great wavy effect of uh, the ship. Actually, I don't even know if that was in the U.S. version, but as I said, since the recording will be up on the YouTube site uh, before too long, this is going to be a short edit compared to uh, all the parts of Shadow Hearts, because, yeah, nothing against, you know, the long plays we do, but those are usually a little, a little longer to do the edits for. So when the game is shorter, it means I can get the uh, turnaround up to when this goes in the YouTube site a lot quicker. I can get that going, and you'll be able to see quicker. Although, fine, when the show is over, you can also watch it on Twitch here, because it'll save the last stream we did for a week. So you can see that, but as I always mention, the idea is that since I'll do edits for stuff, that'll also make, uh, it'll give you more value, or, uh, Nocturne, what was it you said? You said more value for our time, I think it was. When we played, uh, when we uh, did the demoing of uh, Sonic, Gener or Sonic Origins. Now, Generations, we have not touched it yet. We will touch that when I get an Xbox Series X because of the fact that, that runs at 60 FPS when you play it on that unit. Because they added an FPS boost for that, but I gotta get a Series X still, I have not yet. And actually, I kind of gave up looking because, like, fine, I'll wait till I can find one. And I have other games I want to play, and actually, a lot of the games I want to play are still on the previous generation of systems. Stuff like Switch and Xbox One specific, so I don't really have to worry that much. Even the port of uh, Age of Empires 2 that's coming out in January, that's coming to Xbox One. So I'm like, okay, great, I get to play it on that. Mm. Even stuff like uh, Sonic Frontiers, which came out this week, which I did not buy specific, but um, I can still use it on the old system, although from what I understand, I think I want to play it out on the Series X uh, for the most part, because I've seen, actually, one of my coworkers bought the Switch version. Uh, it doesn't look like the worst thing on the Switch, which uh, for Sonic is usually the case. Usually the Sonic stuff on the Switch is awful. But, um, it didn't look bad except the pop-up. Although, to be fair, the pop-up is awful even on the Series X and the PS5, which is shocking to me. I was like, yeah, why is that? They should not have the pop-up the way it is, like, driver three levels. Yeah, I personally own uh, X4 five times over. <clears throat> yeah, let me uh, go through what those are. The English version on the PlayStation, the Japanese version on the PlayStation, the Japanese version on the Sega Saturn, um... Japanese version on uh, the Mega Man X collection, the English version on the Mega Man X collect, or, or the oh the English version on the Rockman X Legacy collection. Wait, is that right? The whatever the Japanese name of the Mega Man X Legacy collection one is. Okay, no, that's it. Oh what? Oh wait, you have the uh, oh you have the English version. Okay, fine. Let me start over. Uh, because there's so many, and actually, fitting that's coming up because I have nine versions of the game of that. It didn't format well. I posted. Don't worry, uh, it's fine. Uh, that's my element. I have time, you know what? Fine. You're hearing those weird uh, gurgles coming. Alright, fine. Bye bye, purple signal. Alright. 
Oh, oh, you're just gonna go this way. All right, fine. Uh, I have it on uh, the play on. Uh, oh, fine. I have it on. This is my fault. Not turned for this. I have it on PlayStation One in English, the PlayStation One in Japanese, the Sega Saturn on the Japanese. Which is some interesting stuff. We'll go into that when we play uh, Mega Man X Four. Some interesting stuff. I have the Mega Man X collection on the PlayStation Two, which has it. I have the. I will get into that as well. We're just going through here in the great fog uh, going on for the case of this. Or, uh, knocking ground, ground. No! Oh. Uh, let's see. Ow, stop it. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. He's like, yeah, he's, uh, punching nothing. Alright. I have it on the Switch. I have the Rockman X Anniversary Collection 1. That's it, thank you. Which is, uh, known to us as Mega Man X Legacy Collection in the US. And, uh, yeah, that's five of them. Yeah, five. Because I was mentioning, uh, before we jumped on, as far as... With the Streets of Rage 2 thing, I have nine copies of this game, a third of which are on the Xbox 360, because I have the, uh... Okay, well, I'll count them down, uh, so uh, we'll have fun this way, comparing our multiple versions of a game we love. Um, which is, uh... Okay, for Streets of Rage 2, I have it on the Sega Genesis. I have it on the Sega Smash Pack Volume 1 on the Dreamcast, which is the worst one. I have the Sega Genesis Mini, which is right here, which is the version you're seeing. I have the Streets of Rage 2 Xbox Live Arcade version on 360. I have the SVC Streets of Rage collection on 360, which has this game in it. I have um, the, the uh, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection on the Xbox 360 that has it. That's uh, seven. I have the Sega Genesis Classics collection on the Switch and the Xbox One. I bought both versions. And, uh, and then I have the Switch on like expansion pack version on Switch. So actually, fine. On the Switch, I have two versions of this game. On 360, I have three. On Genesis, I guess, does this count as Genesis? Technically, that's two. And then I have the Dreamcast version, and then I have, um, yeah, whatever I mentioned. So yeah, I have nine of this fucking game. And this game is awesome, but it's, here's the other thing. It's not necessarily that I'm planning to get multiple copies of the game, it's just that, hey, they put them in collection, so... At that point, I end up having a bunch, of which, I guess that, uh, notion, Nocturne, I'll ask you this. What do you think is the game you have the most copies of? And I'll try to think of what they are. Probably, for me, it's probably Sonic Edge of 1. But this game is pretty close. This game is insanely close as far as how many copies of this I have. Oh, I always remember the, um, Stop Skulls for Fighting channel, uh, he did a video of Sonic ports. He said, like, I can't even- I lost count of how many ports of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 I own. He basically went through all them all saying, quote, Saturn, Dreamcast, PSP, PS2, Xbox 360, Genesis, 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 Master System, I guess, technically, Switch, 3DS, I got on my phone, too. So it's like, okay, all those. And I think I have almost all of those except for, um... Yeah, I think there's one on the Genesis he has, uh, separate for that. I'll do a count. I should've done- you know what? Nocturne, I missed an opportunity. We did, um... Streets of Ra oh no, we, fine, we did, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 1. I missed an opportunity saying, how many versions of that game do I have? Yeah, this have so many, because they ported it all over the place, and I bought tons of the collections that have it. I think that's what happens. And same, I guess, with the Mega Man X stuff. Although, in that case, not as much. Sort of. Although, then again, Mega Man X, uh, 4 has been ported a bit of places. Because, yeah, the PS1 game is on PS3. Uh, as a uh, PS Classic. It is on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, and uh, PC in that X Legacy collection. It's on PS2 and GameCube in the Mega Man X collection. It's on the PlayStation. It's on the Saturn. It is... Uh, I think that's it. If you're to correct me if there's any more else... Well, we're going to be doing baseball. To the tune of... Um, what was the name of this piece of music? Underlogic. Oh my god, I love the music so much. Oh, fine. Another case where we get to, to uh, Mega Man X4, another game with amazing music. In this case, it's also a... Well, actually, no. Mega Man X4 has this. I was gonna say, Streets of Rage 2's music especially makes you want to get up and start dancing or go to a club. So, like, fine. You know what? If, you know, the techno stuff in clubs is not doing it, get this techno going, get the party started, and there might be people in there saying, Oh my god, this is Streets of Rage 2, and, uh, yeah, they'll be really excited. We'll get new 3. Okay, that's a different enemy name than the US release. But yeah, I guess I was gonna say X4 does have tracks that are very like techno-y as well. I mean, especially get to uh, Cyber Peacock. I know Cyber Peacock is amazing music. As far as that. Bang! And okay, I did the backwards uh, grand upper again. So I guess that's something with weird with how I'm doing the uh, the double tapping of the B button. 
Honestly, of the game I have the most times, it might be Mega Man X4. Uh, yeah, well, hey, I mean, there's something to be said about that. But it's one of those things that sometimes it's hard to get into that. It might be tied with Mega Man X3. Okay. Which, um... Actually, here's a question to you. When we get to Mega Man X3, what version do we want to run? How do you want to handle that one? It's your choice. Because I know you called dibs on that one. Because, hey, we're going to do it as far back as last June. But, actually, tech reasons were the big reason we could not uh, do that. Because, remember, we had to run into... How we run in that Saturn version, how we run in the PS1 game. I mean, I guess we could have done Super Nintendo that way, because she does have it in box of Super Nintendo. It's like, put that in a safe, my friend. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you're, you're gonna be, you know, wanting that going. Or you wanna be, uh, making sure that thing is okay. Actually, I was saying that to Chasm, uh, 22. He's also in chat on this one, Nocturne. He's actually, uh, he actually has a pretty sizable Sega Saturn collection. In fact, I was asking, like, what do you have for this? And he was actually going into this, like, he has Mega Man 8 US, he has Mega Man X4, and said, like, I only have the discs, though, and all the boxes, because it was so hard to store them. And I said, like, oh, it costs all this money. He's like, oh my god, it actually costs this much money. He's like, yeah, hold on to that stuff, my friend. Also, because I know there's games he said he wanted to do. He's like, hey, if you ever want to do stuff for Saturn, you want to show off some of those things, yeah, hold on to that, we can show it. Because I've always said, hey, how can we get Saturn stuff running? We can get Saturn stuff running that way. So yeah, we have another source for it, along with whenever they do re-releases, or as I said, Japanese versions. That's the easiest way to run some of that stuff, as how well it's going to be. we has got a Shug Q and Metal M, Metal Mary. Oh! Yeah, stop whipping me, my friend. Alright. And I'll indi indicate into that. Okay, because so, we'll also have the count of that. I mean, I like this discussion, too. Like, hey, that's a unique thing, as far as, you know... As I said, whenever I come on the show, I don't necessarily know what I'm going to discuss. It's almost the kind of thing I'm almost glad I didn't play the Genesis version of this specifically. Like I said, like, oh, I have nine copies. Which one are I picking? Okay, so, for Mega Man X3, as far as Nocturne's saying, I own the Super Nintendo, complete with all inserts in crazily good condition. I own the PlayStation 1 for the Japanese version. I have, I have the Sega Saturn version, which was uh, the Japanese version, of which, yeah, interesting enough, the only U.S. version of that CD edition was actually on the PC, interesting enough. Uh, I have it on the next collection on the PS2. Okay, fine, that's the other one. Fine, because uh, the version in X collection on the PS2 and the GameCube is that CD edition from uh, PlayStation Saturn. And then uh, Rockman X Anniversary Collection on the Switch. Actually, in my case, for Mega Man X3, I, I can answer that one uh, pretty easily. I have the Mega Man X collection on the PS2. I have the Wii U Virtual Console version, because that was the first time they released the Super Nintendo edition. I have the... Uh, the Mega Man X Legacy Collection. And I think that's it. So three. So three to your one, two, three, four, five. So I think that's tied with Mega Man X4 then, in that case, as far as a multiple owner case. Unless maybe you have as many copies of Sonic the Hedgehog as I do. I mean, I know the copies of Sonic the Hedgehog I have are probably in the multiple, or in the double digits. So I'll have to figure what they are. Or oh, fine, I guess when we get to the credits or something, I'll have a think over saying, like, okay, what do I own this game on? And I guess it goes to the idea of how many times do you necessarily mind having the same game? And then also, for that matter, when does it become a decision of, hey, I mean, that's the other interesting thing for the show, which is like, hey, we can show whatever version of this game off that we want, so there might be a preferable way to show it. And since you're saying with Mega Man X4, you want to show the Japanese version, I guess because of the... What was it? It's because of the Japanese voice acting, and also the voice acting for the Mavericks that the U.S. version does not have. If that's right, if you correct me if that's not right, we'll correct that in four weeks when we play the game as it is. Oh, stop. Yeah, we're going down the elevators. Yeah, we have a bunch of those. We mentioned when we played it uh, for the U.S. release. Boom. In my case, it's because of the Japanese voice acting as well as the Japanese opening, which, uh, yeah, I think, because I know, actually, this goes to a question I know you and I were uh, having at one point, which is that, is there going to be a content question on that? I don't know. I mean, we'll, we're going to find that out in a few weeks, fine, in two weeks, because I have to avoid uh, licensed content like a madman for that Dreamcast showcase for uh, at least four games I'm going to run, and also for the credits music. Okay, so, which is good. I don't think we should be in... Fine, it's not going to... I'll say this about Mega Man X4 with that. Because I was kind of nervous of that, that when we played Space Channel 5, because uh, Mexican Flyer, the theme of that was the license track. I said, wait a minute, I'm going to get content flagged for that. I wasn't, although I was weirdly flagged in 
well, not in a way that affected the show, for something with Parasite Eve. For music, we played on part two. Part three, they said, hey, Yoko Shimura owns this. We're putting an indication on this. Like, okay, thank you, Yoko Shimura, for letting us uh, play your music and celebrate this great game uh, for sure for you, or for what your work was. But as I said, I this is not going to be like that, because, I mean, because we're doing Crazy Taxi 1 and 2 for that showcase, um, for sure. I know I can just mute the music for that. I will announce one more game, actually, since you're here, Nocturne, because I know it's one you wanted to see. And it's still there. One of the games we're going to be playing is the Dreamcast version of Star Wars Episode One Racer. Which does not have an Unlock Everything code, so I'm not going to be able to necessarily show off everything in it. But, because it's Star Wars, and Disney will have my ass if I don't do something about that, I'm going to have to turn the music down, so it'll actually be like the Nintendo 64 version a little bit. And, uh, South Park Rally, which... There's only one part of that I might have to do that, which might be the opening, because... The opening is of the TV show, and it also is music that is done by uh, Primus. Uh, Les Claypool specific. You get the uh, Les Claypool voice going. I don't know if they're going to have a thing to that, but I'll see. I'll do some tests uh, to understand for that one, because most of that I don't think is going to be a problem. Is it, it's also a showcase show, so we can manage that. And in the case of um, the Crazy Taxi games, I know um, as that Grand Upper helps on Abadei Day massively. But not in that way, it doesn't. Um... Uh, the Crusader Nerd 64 helped, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to, before we pl start playing those games, I'm going to stop, I'm going to paste in the chat the links to the YouTube sites, or the YouTube uh, playlist of the music from that. So it's like, yeah, you can't hear the Offspring music, or the Bad Religion music, or the Methods of Mayhem in the case of the second game, but, um, yeah, you will be able to hear it that way. Well, actually, interesting enough, I realized, uh, the Methods of Mayhem music that's in, uh, Crazy Taxi 2 is insanely censored. Hmm. Because the, uh, the character select is, uh, Who the Hell Cares. I didn't realize how insanely vulgar Who the Hell Cares is. But they don't have it with, uh, lyrics in the game anyway. And then, uh, uh, well, fine. Crash is not. And actually, uh, the last game we're gonna do, which is gonna be a secret until, uh, we do that show. I will say that. You're, it's gonna be the last game we show. You're gonna want to stay tuned for the entire program. Or at least be there, uh, at the end of probably five hours about for that, uh, showcase. I did the backwards upper again, grand, uh, grand upper again. I don't know how that happened, but yeah, the last game has a licensed content, so I can dance around. We've done that before, so we'll be able to figure that. I don't think the uh, the Mega Man X4, or the Rockman X4 thing for Japan is gonna be that much of a thing. But we'll do, you know, we'll do our audio, uh, you know, balancing that way to figure it. Actually, you know, I think I might have a way I can check that. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you, what we'll do Nocturne for this, uh, for that. I'll check it two ways. We'll do the uh, we'll do the volume uh, setup as far as the show as we always do, and I also wanted to do it on this game by the way just to make sure you heard all this amazing music, you and everybody else in chat that way. Um, I will take one of the audio checks we do. We'll do that uh, probably the day before we do the show. I will upload it to the YouTube site as a private video because I've done that before just to get a sense of what's going on with. Something like that. I'm going to get a li uh, license question for anything. Actually, I did that with Parasite Eve uh, for the last part, because the last part we see nudity that is not visible. Fine, nothing visibly shown, but I said, am I going to get a uh, nudity tag when I put it on YouTube? I uploaded it, I didn't, but that was where I got the music thing, which is weird. Which also means that Nier Automata is on the table. So if they didn't give anything on Parasite Eve, they won't give anything on Nier Automata, by the way, for that. So I'll upload that uh, before we do that. I'll see if I get a strike of any kind, and if I do... Uh, we'll uh, adjust that way. And it'll go up uh, looking split because it'll be only a couple of minutes for the uh, test audio. Which will work fine. I think that'll be uh, fine. As I said, that's what we do on the show. Because I was actually asked this um, actually by my brother today. Because I was saying, like, hey, you know, so I'll bring your birthday. Did you get the gift I sent you? Um, which, uh, uh, y yes on the first count and uh, sort of yes on the other. But I said, he said, like, how are you going to manage, you know, stuff like that? Because I was like, some people have asked me, he's like, hey, do you really have to do this? And the answer is, well, yes, I do, because otherwise my show gets shut down or something. He's like, well, at that point, it's like, fine, we'll manage that as well, but I'll get as close to the experience as we can get. And as I said, I've always mentioned this, like, hey, you know, I can't let you hear all I want from the offspring for Crazy Taxi, but there's nothing saying that I can't put a link saying, like, hey, you listen to it while you're watching the show. Or when we start that game, I'm going to be doing the Yeah, 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 yeah. And so like, yeah, fine, we're replicating it that way. So we make things work. We'll do what we have to do to make it go and give as much of the full experience as we can. And speaking of Nier Tauna, I'm pretty sure it's the only game where I own the exact same version twice. 
Yeah, to uphold copyright. Yeah, that's the reason as far as Dolly Finn, but, uh, okay, yeah. Nier Tomlin is the only game I own twice. Exactly the same. Uh, yeah, because you have it on PlayStation 4, I uh, remember correct. I have the Xbox One version. It came on the Switch last month, and from my understanding, it is an amazing port. It's virtuous to do the port of that. And from my understanding, they're saying this is on the level of some of the best ports Switch has, which makes it more baffling to games like, um, it takes two in Alan Wake where they can't uh, run it specifically. Yeah, the old pro copyright, but here's the thing. It's like, look, you could also, get, and then like, here's the thing, the law thing. In fact, I remember when we played um, Sonic and Sonic 3 and Knuckles the first time. I was actually asked by the chat. I'm trying to remember who was in the chat. I think it was Butt Controller who asked me this, saying, are you a lawyer? Because you're talking like a lawyer in the sense of saying, like, hey, we got a lot of things on the docket. I said no, but which is true, I'm not. But... Also, see, it's funny, it's like all these things I say that I'm not as far as, like, my day job. But anyway, and I, I kind of was thinking about that and saying, like, all right, fine, because there's the fair use concept, which is like, hey, you know, using copyright and elements in the sense of your own usage, but then again, of course, well, fine. Because, like, look, we're not going to necessarily just play Crazy Taxi just so we can listen to Offspring and Bad Religion. But I was like, okay, fine. If they hear something of like that, how is they going to operate? So, like, I'm going to be in line with that. But as we mentioned last week, we'll go back to that again. So, thank you for bringing that up. Um, it's kind of arbitrary anyway, because you say, wait, you know, by me playing Streets of Rage 2 as I am, you could say that I am violating the copyrights of Sega and of uh, Yuzo Koshiro, saying, like, fine, I'm letting you listen to this music that's great. But I guess since he's not an artist or music artist who matters, if you want to put it that way, it was a wrong way of saying, because that's the inference that, like, no, video game music is not real music, which it clearly is. But, like, fine, that's not a concern. Although, then, with Yokoshi Mora, I got that question with Parasite Eve. But not the sense of saying, like, no, you can't use this. Just the element of, like, hey, we detected something of this. And not to you and I, we did a stream that was like that. We did, uh, Sonic Jam. I played the Japanese commercial of, uh, Sonic 1. They said, this is something that Sega owns, and they put an indication on that. Not that it affected anything, not that you can't find that on the YouTube site for it, but they indicated, like, fine, we're gonna put ads on this because of this. And I thought it was the Sonic OVA thing that we're gonna be, uh, flagging me on, but I was kind of surprised. Like, okay, fine, I'm gonna help all the copyright as much as I can, but also, as I said, it can be an arbitrary case in the thought of, you know, what's the answer? Is it feasibly, like, if I was a millionaire, maybe I could be the case of, like, hey, before I do the show, let me send, like, three million bucks or something to the estate of the option and say, like, hey, I'm doing a show in a couple weeks. I love this game. I want to have rights to your music to play it like a movie. It's like I'm making a movie. Like, hey, the royalty rights. Do that. Like, I, sorry, I can't afford that. I'm sorry. I'd love to do that. But I was like, fine, okay. So since I can't do that, let's find the best way. And as I said, that's been the interesting thing about this show. As I mentioned, the challenges of understanding what is stream, not even just as far as, like, a copyright reason, but I said the tech stuff, because, like, Nocturne and I were doing Mega Man X4 and 3, specific as far as those CD versions of uh, X3. We couldn't because they're like, hey, the the uh, feeder's not coming through. All right, I'm going to kill Balloon. I'll read uh, what uh, Nocturne's saying. I own two copies of uh, Nier Tomata's Game of the Yorha edition on PS4 because it's something I want to do while running a game on PS4 and PS5. All right, blue. Yeah, Balloon uh, died. Shit. Yeah, I just want him down. And that is that I want to listen to some of the music with two versions of the track running simultaneously, which is running it on the PS4 and on the PS5. It does play on the PS5 uh, well, as far as I understand, although from what I've gotten sense of what you show me, it's not one of those things where it seems like it's enhancing the game massively the same way games like, uh, I don't know, like uh, Sekiro and uh, I'm trying to think of some other stuff on PS5 that really... Or uh, running PS4 that runs really well on PS5. Oh, uh, Control. I heard Control runs amazing on PS5 compared to on the PS4, as far as it... Yeah, that's an interesting thing to do that. But as I said, it's also been interesting finding challenges as far as the show, going back to that, while fighting Red Bear. So, like, as I mentioned uh, about an hour ago, he's not Bear Hugger from, uh, uh what is it? From uh, Super Punch-Out, who played that. But it's an interesting thing for that. Is it also goes to, well, I think we were saying, love of game. We've mentioned that. I guess that's really what's gone on as far as what this show really is about. This game is about... Or the show is about love of game and how do we express that. Honestly, running a PS4 version of an Automaton on PS5, I don't know much of a difference aside from some slight graphical and stability improvements, which is fine that way. But hey, sometimes it takes a game that, you know, doesn't run great or has issues on the previous system to really run awesome. Which is something interesting when I get an Xbox Series X, like well, just uppercut them in the crotch, damn. 
who is uh, going away, to see the idea of games that mm, had more severe tech problems. And hey, on PS4 and Xbox One, Near Town runs great. I mean, on Switch it runs great. Even if it's running at 30 FPS, it stables anything. So, in that case, yeah, not much to improve, but then you get a game like Sonic Unleashed. Sonic Unleashed, the frame rate basically stops in areas of that game. So running with a 60 FPS uh, mod on, or the 60 FPS uh, boost on Series X, or even the base 30 run that the system does on its own, that makes a difference. Or even something like, as I mentioned, this Advent Rising, which was that game that was uh, based on writings of Orson Scott Card and had music by Tommy Tellerico. Great music. It had a horrible frame rate ran on Xbox original. They made it backwards compatible on Xbox One, and that means that you run a Series X and it gets it fixes the frame rate, which is amazing. I've heard excellent things about the Switch version of Automata. Yeah, it's um, it was virtuous to do the port of that. And I'm trying to remember uh, virtuous. Oh wait, virtuous. Uh, as far as what they ported. Oh wait, they ported um, Starlink Battle for Atlas to the Switch. I have it on the Switch myself. That's a great port. I was thinking like, wait a second. It is on PS4 and Xbox One. Is it going to run worse on the Switch? Not really, honestly. So I think it goes to what I've sometimes mentioned, what we sometimes mention on the show, the idea of just because the Switch is a less powerful system is not necessarily an excuse to say that, oh yeah, you know, you can't run a game effectively. I mean, even the idea of like, when people say like, hey, there's cloud versions of stuff like Kingdom Hearts games, uh, some Resident Evil games, like 7, 8, and uh, the 2 and 3 remakes, the thought of, hey, these games can run natively, L.A. Noir can run really well as far as that. Why can't some of these other things? The idea of, like, laziness, but is that even you sometimes get the other way, which is It Takes Two is a native port of what I've seen. It runs really badly on the Switch. Although, fine. Reviews have said it's not. It's like, I don't know if they're saying that because they like the game. But it looked like it ran really sluggishly. I'm saying, like, that's not a cloud version. It's one of those cases, like, maybe it should have been. Just because, like, well, fine. They couldn't get the frame rate running or the tech running effectively on the unit. I mean, even Sonic Frontiers, which is it doesn't run the worst I've ever seen, but the pop-up that's already bad even on the new systems is uh, not impressive on that one either. Or say it again, if Square Enix has this running natively on the Switch, they could have absolutely had Kingdom Hearts running natively. Yeah, I agree. Because at first my thought was like, wait a minute, and this is because this is before uh, Atomic got announced for Switch. Because my first thought was like, uh, one and two, they're porting the PS3 editions. Fine, okay, they're sort of porting the PS3 editions. And then the PS4, uh, PS4 uh, editions, I guess, and Xbox One, which I would play the first game. Could have run it that way. And three, I mean, rebuilding on three, but then the question, like, hey, why didn't they do that? And then, I guess, the cost reason, or the thought of, like, hey, I don't know what they thought to that. Because it's weird, because with Square, mm, from what I've understood, when they do the, the, the stream thing, or the, uh, cloud versions of stuff, uh, from what I've understood, I thought Hitman 3 apparently was fine with it, sort of. I mean... Paying internet connection, but even then, by that standard, somebody's like, hey, it's really bad, even the best stuff, but that one apparently not. Guardians of the Galaxy was apparently a big problem when it ran that way. Kingdom Hearts, I played it that way for the demos, like, this runs awful, and it doesn't look great either. That's the other thing. It's, it runs bad and doesn't look great, even the way they're doing it. So it's kind of, you're not necessarily getting a case of understanding. And remember, you're tied to internet connection, so, because the Switch is a portable unit, you're kind of losing the point of portability. So, that's kind of a question. I mean, as I said, and it, I mean, it's weird also that, because I was thinking that with uh, Sonic uh, Frontiers, because I said, I haven't bought it yet, because I bought Atari 50, which isn't here, because uh, the Steelbook Edition got delayed by about a month, uh, unknowingly, to me, until like a week ago. But it's one of those things, as soon as they announced it on the Switch, uh, my heart kind of my heart kind of dropped, because like, uh, really, do you have to put this on the Switch? Because you're not going to... Because, I mean, fine, say this with Sega. Sega will not cloud version any... I don't think they cloud version anything on the Switch. But then again, I'm thinking, wait a minute, the Sonic stuff doesn't run great even outside of that. And, fine, the fact that, look, the fact that uh, Sonic uh, Frontiers runs better as, as good as it does, doesn't mean it runs well, it just means it runs better than other stuff I've seen. But then again, the Switch can't usually even run the old Sonic games that effectively. I might actually have bought this on the Switch, even though I have it on the PlayStation 4, but that element's deal breaker, and also the way they do it, because I'll say this. Look, I'm not, I and mean, we've sometimes said this before in the show, that, look, I'll try and have an open mind on stuff. Because, actually, with the cloud version stuff, I've actually never played anything that was cloud-based. So I was like, okay, fine, let's see this. And since they put a free demo, I said, okay, I'm not spending 90 bucks on this game, because I already have them all on Xbox One. But since they're doing a demo, take a look, see what it's running. I mainly didn't have the internet connection that I have now. 
But even with it... Mm. Well, I take a drink, and yeah, watch the uh, motorcycles get a uh, run me over. Like, yeah, damn. I was like, I was gonna try to look at that. I was like, I'm gonna be fair to this thing, damn. I know people are like, I don't, I hate the idea of a cloud version. I'm like, okay, fine. If it runs well, I'm fine with that. Okay, even though I was like, fine, you lose the element of portability, whatever. I'll give it a shot. But it runs really badly, the point, and it kept missing, it kept losing connection. I'm saying, wait a minute, what's going on here? It seems like they didn't optimize it properly. And that was with the demo, and it was pretty close to when it came out, so it's not like, oh, wait a minute, this is of an unfinished product that massively. So, that's kind of the thing, but it's, it's also the element of, of the other way, which is that me saying that, fine, it takes two, maybe it should have been the cloud because they can't even run it natively well. Or the Sonic stuff. I'll find some of the Sonic stuff anyway. Oh, fine, I should say, fine, let me rephrase that, the 3D Sonic stuff, because I know uh, Forces does not run great on Switch. Frontiers runs better than I expected, but yeah, it still is uh, the weakest. And uh, I think there was another one of... That. Oh, right, Colors Ultimate, right. And Colors Ultimate could kill you on the Switch because it had uh, flashing lights uh, massively bad. Where it's like, hey, the textures are uh, glitching out and they're flashing so badly, the moment that they had to patch that game so people didn't die playing it. Like, okay, that's another problem. I mean, hey, say this is at least about Kingdom Hearts uh, Cloud on Switch, all these Cloud versions that are not very good. They won't kill you. Oh, crap. How'd I miss him with the knife? All right, fine. Because I'm like, let me throw the knife at Sal to get this ready. Oh, uh, by the way, there is our final destination again. Damn. If it's Souther is bad, and, oh, okay, you know, Nocturne will go into this, because you're saying, like, difficulty of, um, beat-em-ups. Actually, good question, then. Do you remember what beat-em-ups you played, uh, if any, specific? Ow, oh, damn, I'm getting caught by stealth. It dropped the ground. Because then that'll also be an interesting element of getting a sense of, okay, which ones did you play, and then which ones are really, really difficult, of which, now this game is getting hard, although this is getting hard because we're at the end of the game, almost. We're at the, uh, second-to-last level. So in that case, it makes sense as far as it... I mean, because I guess, also, we do have other stuff as far as beat We played the Money More from Power Rangers a couple months ago. We're going to do Batman Returns and Super Nintendo. I did buy that, uh, that, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga collection. There's a bunch of stuff on that that is great to that and definitely worth showing off. I don't remember specifically. I've seen a few, but I don't know off the top of my head, which is fine. I just was trying to get a sense because, like, hey, you know, look, we do it on the show. You know that. But also the idea of understanding difficulty of, uh, beat em up. Honestly, that's a good thing to go into. In fact, actually, I'll tell you of all the things... Uh, I'll indicate this of the regulars on the show. Dolly Finn kind of got into that specific guy. I think Dolly Finn specifically has like, how hard a game is this? And yes, yeah, Souther's uh, dead, thankfully. Um, and she brought this up when we played, we played Tetris Attack. She said, hey, you know, I felt like I could run this game specific and then get really, really good at it. Like, when can difficulty be a, uh, you know, an element that's going to turn you off of, an, of a game or maybe even of a genre? Um, the Crusader 64 and I were talking about that last week with real-time strategy games when it came to our, uh, second part of Shadow Arts we played. Or he played. He's playing the whole game. I've never played it. But I'm loving what I'm playing so far that game. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of an interesting thing, because it's like, what are the really hard beat-em-ups or the really easy ones? And also, what is difficulty looking like? And sometimes that's a question, especially if, you know, I'm getting the sense that maybe some people in the chat have not played this game. So if that's the case, the question is like, hey, wait a second, I'm coming into this, especially if Nocturne's like, hey, I didn't play many, I wasn't very good at them, or I didn't really... It didn't they'd stick out that much. You might question that and say, okay, fine, why would I come to something like that where I'm getting a pimp slap by Buffet here? And I throw him against the uh, ground. So it is a worthwhile thing to go into, and as I said, I'll try to give as best of an answer as I can. Sometimes, I'll tell you, maybe because I've played some of these games for as long as I have... I might not necessarily know the answer until I actually look it up or do the preparation for the show, which actually incentivizes doing the prep for the show. Like, hey, you know, practice a game to get good at or be able to show it, it to the best of my ability, but also getting into an element of understanding certain things that even I didn't know. Hey, I'll get questions maybe that I didn't expect. Like, hey, I need, I hopefully I'll have an answer to this. So it kind of works really well that way. I guess actually then, in that case, to go to that Nocturne, I think you would like uh, the price of it aside. I think you'd like Final Fight 3, because Final Fight 3, I think, is a game that, if you're like, hey, what would be a good first beat-em-up to play? That might be one. Or another thing, feasibly, since a lot of them were based in the arcade, Adolf Hitler was in the game, they're saying that, was this an arcade game? Not explicitly it wasn't, though there is an arcade version via the Mega Play unit of Sega's. But with a lot of those games, they have free play. So you can just keep putting in coins and then see the end of the game eventually. So it's like unlimited continues, so if nothing else, it's at least a good way to practice before you get into a case of playing a game like this where you have uh, 
two continues, and then that's it, game over. Which, uh, somehow I have not had that happening with, uh, fine, when I played the English version about an hour ago, and now we're in the Japanese version. So, I mean, I used one of my continues, so that's gonna be a concern, but for now, I'm okay. That being said, I will still beat it again since you're here, and actually, I'll tell you, that's another thing I just like doing, because the beat-up is so short, Oh, crap, I off-screen the, uh, meat. The meat, by the way, or the, uh, chicken, it will not disappear on its own, but if you go off-screen, it goes away. So that's the idea. So sometimes I get an idea of, you know, playing a game like that so you can get, put, have training wheels on to get a sense of how it operates. Because somebody was like, hey, you know, actually, Edwack goes on this, he'll probably indicate this when we play Guitar Man, saying that, hey, our audiences and gamers and youths of today, would they be able to handle a game like what we're playing here? To which I say, he's like, no, they wouldn't, to which I would say, I don't know, I think maybe, but the other thing is that, hey, you know, I wasn't a great player at everything I played when I first started, or even certain genres. I had to get my feet wet before I really understood how to play games well for certain things. So in that way, like, having an option for that, somebody's like, hey, would it be, you know, a travesty to have a really easy mode to get somebody into this? Which is say, no, not necessarily, because then you can understand that you probably love the game so much, you'll then want to get really, really good at it and then feasibly go after it on its hardest difficulty, maybe. Or go for an element of getting that challenge and getting that satisfaction, like, hey, I did this, I put in all this time to get really good at this and to show off skills. So in that way, yeah, there you go. All right, there we go. Mm. All right, all right, next elevator up. Actually, yeah, I should be more careful also because of the fact that I'm running out of lives. And Zero does not count as life in, uh, I don't think any of the games in the franchise, as it is. Yeah, but here's the thing, I guess, as far as just beat-em-ups in general, is, like, well, the appeal, I guess, is just the fact that, you know, the catharsis, you know, beating up and stuff that way. But also, with Switch of Rage, here's the other thing, is the thought made with beat-em-ups is that, hey, they just, you know, just hit one button, that's it. But there's a lot of finesse to a lot of the really good ones. And, actually, Final Fight's one that does that. Uh, this is definitely one that does that. And then a lot of others. For sure. But then it also goes to certain things as far as, like, genres. What are the games that attach us? Or that get- or that uh, we get attached to specific? Alright, uh, yeah, come on back, uh... Him. No, no. Again, this, uh, Techno Beat, uh, yeah. Yeah, Griffiths. Yeah, if I can get him in the pattern where he'll just do the dive down like that... We'll go vertical- or he'll go horizontal and he'll do that dash. I can just, uh, stick my fist out and hit him. And also try to avoid getting too close, otherwise I get myself grabbed. In this case, it's also about reading patterns, really, and trying to get a sense of a pattern read, and then also being able to be on the same plane, because you're going up and down like this, unless it's a beat-em-up that doesn't have something like that, like uh, the Ninja Warriors by Taito. Uh, Mighty Moon Power Rangers, a game like that, actually, that we played uh, back in August, was one. And actually, I guess another one, like, um, well, uh, Chasm 22 was mentioning Guardian, or I was mentioning for him, Guardian Heroes, because he's mentioned it to me multiple times. We we're jumping between planes that way. We we're moving left and right, but he had a button to go in between. And uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie on Super Nintendo, does that. All right, there is uh, Kua, as also, uh, there's uh, one who's named uh, Mutsu, as well as Ho Oh. Not that Ho Oh. So it's like, yeah, before Pokemon, I guess they said Ho Oh is the name of this guy. So it's like, all right, fine. I'll probably have a picture of Ho -Oh just because of this when I edit, just because, like, fine. Like, this is not, you know, the celestial firebird from uh, Pokemon uh, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. It's uh, this uh, samurai uh, fighting guy. He's like, yeah, still same idea. Yo, yo. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I, do, I gotta do the lands so I don't take damage from the toss. All right, there's Mutsu. Whoa! Okay, good. Yeah, all right. I am getting actually really good as far as the timing. And that's the other thing, understanding timing of stuff, because you have to hit up and C button when you get thrown right as you land. Yeah, and yet be ready to hit Sparrow down. All right, boom. And get out when uh, Tempest and uh, everybody else holds on to you. And hail. Yeah, you also get the name, so that, that's the other element. And I guess the other thing also about the beams, this is one thing that... Actually, until we play... Okay, fine. We sort of showed this when we did uh, Final Fight 1, because I had a random uh, appearance for online of someone coming in and saying, hey, I want to play this game, and we played it for uh, the first run of that. Actually, when the medics and I do uh, Streets of Rage 3, him and I are going to co-op that. So that's the other thing. Beating up... Uh, Beating up enemies with your friends. That's just a blast. We can do that. Ugh, get off! Yeah, usually in this case, yeah, getting surrounded is the worst thing that can happen. And because there's so many enemies on the screen, unlike Final Fight, of uh, the Super Nintendo one specifically, at least. Yeah, that's a constant, uh, fear. But it's also satisfying when you just, uh, bust his head on the pavement. Or on the, uh, elevator. And go, <laughs> with Henry, damn. 
they're laughing it up, so yeah, we gotta take them down. Oh! Wait, does the belly flop? Whoa! Hmm. Actually, I would say, uh, Nocturne, just to that, if you, uh, are looking for, I guess, a good beat-em to get started on that doesn't cost a fortune. Actually, this is probably a good one. Actually, any of the Streets of Rage games really are good ones. And hey, if you want to turn the difficulty down a little bit, it still gives you enough... Here's the other thing about this, because, like, hey, you know, because a lot of these older games, they will give you an adjustable difficulty, but also, even the easier difficulty, you will have to still bring a little bit to it, so you'll still feel sad. So not like, oh, it's going to completely, you know, talk down to you, saying, oh, you can't handle this, it's too easy now. But, like, no, it gives you enough of that. If you do get an image of Ho-Ho, it might be funny to add a snarky law with the image. Yeah, I'll see what I can find, because that also could- that's the other thing, and look, you know this, because you've been on the show. Sometimes some of the weird stuff I, that gets in the edit, or some things that get inspired by people saying something, actually, I like first inspired one when I, we talked about- we're doing Sailor Moon of the Story for part one, I said, uh, I'm trying to remember, um, I- right, the guy did the music for Sailor Moon the series, and also for that game, who is unfortunately no longer with us. He also did Japanese music for Sesame Street, and I basically did a superimpose of a picture of Sailor Mercury with Elmo. So, like, I could get it a case like that. I did a mixture of, um, you know, Navi from Ocarina of Time with Radio Rahim from Do the Right Thing, uh, based on Protorova and I playing with, um, uh, Ocarina of Time that way. As well, we got robots, by the way. So, yeah, Particle and, uh, Molecule. So, yeah, I will definitely do a- do something cool for the edit. And that's also the other thing as well. That, that's the fun thing. I was like, hey, you know, you're seeing this live as far as how the show is, as it always goes, and I want to get these robots killed before I get to the... Right, come on, robots, come back. I want you dead. Because I don't want to die he Oh, shit, I did die. Because otherwise I have my... Fine, all right, I have my... Uh, I have my last continue. I don't know if this is going to be enough to beat the last part, but fine, I'll get a game over playing the game the second time, I guess. But I have the code, I'll put the code in. Because I was expecting to do that anyway. It's like, yeah, just keep jumping. They're off screen, hopefully they'll keep running into my foot. But yeah, that's always been the fun thing, just do edits, because like, wait a second, fine, I've had to edit things because, hey, I had issues with stream or stuff. Actually, every part of Parasite Eve has been that way, so hopefully uh, the finale won't be that way. But... Also just like, hey, put some kind of visual reference that way. And sometimes that's just been the blast. I mean, even... Like, with uh, the Crusader 64, he's like, I just love some of the stuff you can come up with. Oh, crap, he blew up on me. Alright, either way, he's dead. Hmm. So, it adds to the show you're seeing now. And I did get another life, so thank God. Oh, I got two lives, shit. Wait a minute, do I get... Wait a minute, is the threshold for lives less in the Japanese version? Because... In the US version, it's 20,000, and then 50,000 after that, and then 100,000 after that, and every 100,000 after that. But maybe it's just at the increments in the Japanese version, but we're hearing this great music again, which is a remix, as I mentioned, of the title screen music of this, title screen music of the first game, and round eight of the uh, last game. And kids, you're in such a great mood, kind of a very somber element of, oh yeah, we're getting there, we're almost there at Mr. X, he's going down. But also, as I mentioned also, because we're talking about elements of loss in the show, because we talked about the passing of uh, Kevin Conroy, who voiced Batman in the animated series, as well as Injustice and the Batman Arkham Asylum Knight and uh, City Games. Eh. And honestly, something like this, I heard, I was listening to this on, while I was doing uh, work yesterday, after I'd heard he passed, it came up on my iPod that way, and then I heard that, and it's like... I, I kind of felt almost sort of overtaken a little as far as like the emotional element thing like yeah you know I feel this element and as I said uh, someone I know her brother died very suddenly about a week ago and I really kind of put that in perspective and hearing this it kind of hit something to me and I said an emotional element as far as music in your game which as we mentioned the thought that could you do that with early uh, music like this and the answer is absolutely it is a great example of that as you're hearing you know all the uh, synth going on here it just sounds so good so it works on a lot of elements as far as that emotional element of the game, and then also personal, you know? Especially when it gets here, oh my god, I love it. It just sounds so good. That's- okay, Nocturne, I'll tell you another thing. You're saying that- you mentioned this on the show, actually, with Nier Automata. You said that you played the game because you love the music so much, you heard the music. You want to play a game as far as really good music, just to experience that. Streets of Rage is your franchise, my friend. You want to play, especially the first two. Three I, is definitely acquired taste, but I don't think three has bad music. It's good music. It's different. That's the thing about three. It definitely has a different sound. 
for sure, but some of this music, this is just terrific stuff. And if nothing else, listen to the music. I will probably also, in the link list, I'll put a link to pretty much every piece of music in the soundtrack. This is that good, my god. And same with the first game. I was kind of in that case with the first one we were here, especially round eight. Oh! Actually, this is a remix of a uh, part of Round 8 from that game. I also have the link to uh, Streets Rage 1, because if you didn't see our play Streets Rage 1, that is a great one. Whoa. Right, come on, Vulture. Right with the foot. Alright, yeah, I'm getting good. Alright, so yeah, basically pretty much just right as her head's about to hit the ground, hit up and C button. Which I'm glad I'm glad I'm able to get the timing down, but it's only when they do a throw up. You get uh, knocked down, that's not gonna be happening. And is it also the variety as far as that? Because, yeah, I can... When I hold him, I can choose to toss him behind. I can also punch him a couple times. Or I can vault over him and uh, slam him down on the ground. I can sort of stun lock him a little, but he'll move around enough that it's not necessarily always viable. Or just use my, uh... Oh, sorry. Right, yeah, boom, you're done. But, yeah, we're gonna get a uh, nail again, and I'm nervous about that. Actually, one thing I'm noticing is that a lot of the enemy names are basically the same between the U.S. and the Japanese version. As I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned this uh, while you're here, Nocturne. Uh, the uh, Japanese version came out after the U.S. version, which is weird. Because it's a Japanese-developed game they released in the U.S. before it released in Japan, which back in the 90s was unheard of. Usually, it is that Japan would get it first because, hey, it got made there, and then it got localized. Uh, not in this case. Although, 3 was, uh, 3 was the way we expected, because 3... They made a lot of changes to 3. I mean, they made some in this one, but not a whole lot. That, which is also why you're seeing the obscured of Blaze whenever you do that kick. The US version did not have that. I gotta take care of Nail. Do the slide. Yeah, he's doing the electric slide going back to the 90s thing. Come on. I was like, yeah, just do- Okay, I, what was that? That looked weird. I think it's is that a new is that a unique move for him of his or do you get stuck in an animation or something? I'm gonna love to look back. That's the other thing, Knock. You've seen this before, probably, as far as like some of the edits I'll do. When something weird happens, and we saw that with Sonic, actually we did Sonic Mania, there are tons of edits I did saying like, hey, I got stuck in the goop there. I got uh I I'm stuck this way. Something happened there. Uh yeah, I can just I can well, and during the edit process, I'll pause the video, take a screen capture, like, wait, this happened, what happened? And I think I'm getting game over. I don't think I'm gonna beat this on just this alone, but as I said, I'll put the stage to the code, we'll end the game, and, or we'll uh, beat the game that way. Because I beat it without it before, as far as the US version. Not that this is harder, uh, unlike uh, 3. 3 is definitely a case where the US version is a lot harder than Japan's version. We'll show that, because we're playing both versions for that one. But uh, I'll at least get to that, and then I'll be in the show for the night. Wait, did I get. Oh, I got a health recovery! Okay, I didn't even notice that. I was like, wait a second. There was no item on screen. I'll have to look back when we for the U.S. version. Did we? Did I have a health recovery when I got myself to different levels? Like, damn, uh, Z Kusano hurt bad. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, he will bust down on my hold. So yeah, I gotta be careful on that. Whoa. Maybe I could try and you know stun lock him the way I was doing before, sort of. Which is just hit the punch a little bit. Hopefully he doesn't do that thing, but alright, fine, it's working. So I'm gonna do that just so I can live. Cause I'm on my last life. I don't think I'm gonna win anyway, cause I'm at low health, and I have to beat Shiva and, uh, Mr. X. Yeah, I said, you can't exactly exploit this game all the time with this. Sometimes they'll come out of your stun, or your stun lock for them. Hmm. But sometimes you can. So that's the other thing, finding a uh, weakness and exploiting it. Oh, fine, we'll get to Mr. X. Here he is. Yeah, he's smoking. There he is. So yeah, the U.S. version did not have hit, that does not have him with that. Oh, I got a full recovery. Anyway, cool. Ah, Donovan's doing that, damn it. Alright, alright, we have to fight Shiva. Jeez, yeah, definitely so. Yeah, it's weird, because I found you could do this in the first game, but fine, against Shiva you can't do that. It's not a case where you do that against against the bosses or anything. It's just that, hey, certain enemies you kind of can, but they'll move around so rapidly, they'll have a lot of moves to it. So you can sometimes do that when you can, but other cases you can't. I mean, I can't with him. 
As I said, I'm gonna get a game over, I'll put the code in, and we'll show the ending once more. Yeah, but if I do somehow beat him this way... Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, so yeah, there is Mr. X laughing up. Alright, E. Yeah, it's game over. But as I said, uh, the code is not hard to continue. Yeah, you have limited continues in this game. So, I'll show you how it operates. Uh, you have to have two controllers plugged in to do this. Hold the A and the B button on the second controller and hit start on the first one to go in the options menu. There you go, you get round. Let's go to round eight, we'll go to, uh, five. As far as players. And then you select, uh, one or two players, and then you can continue right back where you were. Although, I gotta start the level over again. Um... You know, fine. Blaze is my character, honestly, for this. We've shown the other characters, not that we didn't. Yeah, uh, Blaze has got to take down, because, yeah, we took down, uh... Mr. X last time with, um, uh, what is it? With Axel for the first game. Uh, for the jab for the US version I played earlier, we used Blaze, we're using Blaze again. And the next game, well, it'll be two people. It'll be, uh, and Maddox and myself, and we'll be using a, uh, boxing kangaroo, actually. Uh, you'll want to stay tuned when we do Street Rage 3, which is gonna be sometime next year. You'll understand when we get to that, and if you know Street Rage 3, you're like, yeah, we're gonna do that. In fact, he's uh, mentioned that. He's like, can we uh, have that happen? We're like, yes, absolutely. We definitely have to show that. All right, but yeah, fine. We'll pipe uh, Bear Jr. that way, and we'll get it. So, yeah, speaking of the cheese that way, because that's the other thing about this game is that, yeah, there's certain things you exploit, but with Bear Jr. here, he'll move erratically. When he gets close, he'll do the throw, or he'll do the grab and punch you in the face. Or if you get close, you can't necessarily grab him. So. You could sort of sometimes do it, but also not always. So, depending on the enemy, or also depending on the luck you get on where their positions are, and how they decide to react, you might be able to exploit their movements, but not always. But I'm glad I got to show that in one case I could do it to help. But as I said, it's not always a guarantee. So, in that way, this game is well balanced. You can cheese it in certain ways, but you also can't in others. As I said, this is a fair enough challenge as well, so that if you run the easy mode, or on the normal as I am, yeah, you're not going to be feeling that the game is cheating. Alright. So, one more uh, time of the elevator. Because that's the other thing. Anytime you play a beat em up, oh, there's going to be an elevator in it, usually. I mean, it's kind of probably be amazing if you find a game that doesn't have an uh, elevator in it as a beat em up. You can hear this music again. This is fine. This is one of my favorite pieces of music in the game, in many ways, also because it's in sampling of the old game. But I was, I guess, it's putting in you in that element of, hey, what is Mr. X doing? Why is he doing this? Because he's mad about what happened last time, was defeating him, but yeah, we're gonna send him, uh, out again. Yeah, I guess, here's the one thing I guess I'll say about, um, uh, Mr. X, because, uh, spoiler warning, he's in the other ones. Because there's a DLC, the fourth one, that's named, uh, Mr. X's, uh, Revenge, actually. Which I don't have to buy, by the way. But in that case, yeah, they don't ever do the thing they have in the final fight where you knock the guy out the window, and then another bad, another villainous group gets involved. Alright, I'm getting good as far as the, uh, you know, the drop of that, or the, uh, recovery of the throw. Yeah, actually, I'm doing it perfect now. Like, okay, fine. You get in the rhythm. That's the other thing about this game. And maybe the, also the go thing with the music. It's almost like a weird rhythm game in the sense that when you're just changing just the rhythm and the movements of everything, kind of going in line with the music, honestly, too. In that way, in the sense of, like, okay, fine, let me do that, do the jump, and as soon as he's gonna do something, you get ready and have the, uh, next action you do ready. Look, boom, he's doing that. And it kind of becomes this great, almost, ballet of movements. Which, mainly, there are a lot of games that tend to do stuff like that. Mentioning, uh, Nier Automata Nocturne, that's a good case of that. Actually, um, Castle 22 is playing, uh, through, was playing through a Bayonetta 3, just came out, which by the same people who made that. And there's another one that, you know, that ballet of movement when you can really get the, uh, mechanics for running. Actually, I guess, in that case, when you think about, like, the logical extension of beat-em-ups, a game like Nier Automata is kind of a bit of a logical extension. So, actually, when you really want to look at that, you could look at Nier Automata as a beat-em-up, kind of, even though it's also... I mean, it's not just a beat-em-up, it's a lot of things. It's it's sort of a beat-em-up, sort of a hack-and-slash, sort of an RPG, sort of a shooter, sort of a, uh, I don't know, maybe you could say, like, a, maybe a little bit of a... Not a roguelike, exactly. It's kind of an adventure. It's a lot of things, in a lot of ways. So now I guess that's where the beat-em-up go, and that way's, that's where the beat-em-up went, along with revivals of stuff, which actually one thing... I'm surprised it took me until now to mention this. I did get my uh, limited run copy arrived finally of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. I waited to get the uh, physical version 
I bought the Xbox One version because it's, I think, one of the first times they did a physical for Xbox One. And I want to say to Limited Run, yeah, please keep doing this for this system. All right, there's another life. So I got it. It's great. It's, uh, the people made the Scott Pilgrim vs. the World game, um, uh, Tribute, or, yeah, Tribute, I believe, is the name of the company. And actually, um, uh, T. Lopes did the music for Sonic Mania, did the music. And it's awesome. It is so good. I will definitely want to show that game. Oh, actually, that would be a really good one. Like, hey, you want to get in to a beat em up that way? That would be a great one to pick up. Or download, because it's only like 25 bucks. Or you can also get the physical, which I believe is uh, widely available on top of the uh, limited run release. Alright, I gotta be careful with him. Although, fine. I have, I have uh, two continues, so I can be fine with this. Yeah, in this case, I'm not able to cheese him this time. Yeah, honestly, I'd say uh, Tom and his genre isn't very easily defined, and has a bunch of those many different ones, which is, I think, the beauty of it, really. Of what I played of it, what you've shown of me, I've shown it to me, and also you playing through the whole game multiple times. And I think that's kind of the interesting thing about it. So, I mean, if nothing else, I mean, hmm. I can imagine maybe taking, you playing a game like that, and then maybe coming up to a beat-em-up like, something like this, or, uh... Teenage Mutant, Ninja Tur uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, any of them, whether it's the Shredder's Revenge one or any of the older ones. And maybe playing that that way. Exactly. Okay, so yeah, that's the idea. And that's interesting that way, too. So actually, in that way, you might like this. Or, as I said, anything else uh, talking about Nier Automata from Platinum Games, who also made Bayonetta. Actually, that would be a good one. I wish that Legend of Korra game they made was uh, not a digital-only one, because that's lost time. That, I heard, is really good. And they also made that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game uh, that I heard was not very great, uh, Mutants of Manhattan. And, uh, oh, and they also made Mad World, which I have on the Wii. Which is another one with licensed content, another one that is uh, insanely, insanely violent. And I'm gonna have to put on... I'll put the adults-only tag on the uh, YouTube site of that. It is insanely violent. It's good, but it's also heavy. And there's also maybe licensed content of that as well. And that's another one, yeah. Insanely tasteless as far as how it is, but it's a good one as far as all right. There's our continue Yeah, we're finishing them off. Uh, Shiva's going down Ow And actually there's another game. I didn't play this one uh, Astral Chain which is on the switch which is by Platinum as well And actually also they uh, the other thing as far as Platinum's games is concerned I know we mentioned this before on the show, which is that they were initially Clover Studios the people who made God Hand Which is a game that costs a lot of money kind of beat them up as well uh, they also made Okami, which I love Okami, at some point we'll show that. And they also made Beautiful Joe, with that, actually, Beautiful Joe's kind of beat up as well. Actually, kind of in a style of something like this, sort of. Although, in that case, you're strictly 2D, and you have your time powers. I don't know, um, either, uh, uh, either Nocturne or anybody in chat, or probably Finn or anybody, if you played Beautiful Joe, or uh, what your experience might be with that, or other stuff of Platinum or, uh, Clover Studios. This is good stuff, uh, for sure, for those. I guess if we do Beautiful Joe, I'll try to get it on the PS2, because there's extra stuff on the PS2 version, from what I've uh, understood. Alright, yeah, we just gotta get, uh, Mr. X. Yeah, but he has the gun, so yeah, as we mentioned, as in the last game, yeah, he's, uh, brought the gun to a fist fight, which is, I guess, smart, but it's like, fine. He, he was coming prepared for us being here, but yeah, you know, knee him and then hit him in the face. He's going down. He, yeah, he's not, he's not, fine, he's living. But he's not gonna be, uh, you know, cause us trouble anymore. Alright, yeah, go down, man. Oh, that's the other thing, is that he will do the, uh, hit you with the butt of the gun, but he's also not someone who will grab you because he's holding the gun, so that's something to keep, keep in mind. And also grab, uh, the Donovans that come around and just toss it into and the Galacias. Ow, damn. It'll spread across the room, but it will hurt his, um, minions, so that's the other thing. Yeah, he, like, he shot his own people. Like, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's cornered now, he doesn't care. Alright, yeah, I gotta be careful doing that, just do that. Yeah, there you go, cause yeah, that will do a lot of damage. Alright, come on, Mr. X. Hmm. Talk about, you know, the finality of this, you hear this, like, oh yeah, he is, uh, not screwing around, and neither way. Yeah. Alright, uh, last hit. Let's get him with the... Oh, wait, oh, oh no, the ice. He's over there. The ghost show! I got him. He's done. I got a life. Awesome. Alright, so, uh, yeah, bye-bye, uh, Mr. X. Mm. 
Uh, we'll see you next time in uh, Street Rage 3. All right, there we go. That is uh, the end of the game. Again, and it's fitting for the beat em up because, like, hey, older beat em up is short. So there's a good reason to play them uh, multiple times. And especially with 3, there's going to be a reason to play for sure. And actually, I have not. I don't know if I've actually beaten the uh, Japanese version, so I'm gonna be curious if the ending's different. I doubt it is. But hey, we'll show it up both ways. Like, hey, this game is good enough, it should be shown both ways. Because yeah, I'll go on my final thoughts then on Streets of Rage 2. I love this game. This is a fantastic game. It is one of the best beat em ups of the 90s. It is uh, perhaps the best game in this franchise that already has a lot of great entries in it. It has sublime music, some of the best music you're ever going to hear in 16 bits. It has terrific graphics and presentation. It really enhances over what the first game did. This looks terrific. They quadrupled the size of the cartridge, and they came up with gold with all the tech they're running. As far as how it looks, all the enemies on screen, a lack of slowdown. That was no slowdown anywhere detected in this game, for sure. Either version. It does. Yeah, it's terrific as far as how it looks, the way it's presenting itself. The emotional element as far as its music, but also just the fact that it is so much fun. That's the other thing. This game just plays so terrifically. It's one of those games that, even if you wouldn't necessarily think you're going to be good at it, it's worth picking up and worth playing just because of the fact that it's so much fun that even when it kicks your ass, you're going to have a great time and you're going to say that I want to... It's that... It's, I'll tell you what it is. It's that one more game mentality. And sometimes we mention this on the show. The idea that you don't want to let the game beat you. You're going to keep playing. You just keep playing. And you go, I'll tell you. It's one of those games that actually... Ed Webb's mentioned this. Him and Nikki played... Um, uh, what was it? Street Rage 4, they said, we started playing that game at 9 p.m. Uh, the next time we looked over the clock and beat it, it was 3 a.m. So, like, they, they couldn't stop playing it as well. So, in that case, if you played Street Rage 4, you definitely want to go back to the old ones or play the new one as well. They're all terrific. Even 3, and because 3 is kind of a little bit of a black sheep of the franchise. That's the one we're going to see next, for sure. Wow. Yeah, I've had that element too. I had that happen, actually. I remember that was with... Uh, there are a lot of games that's happened to me with, but we love Katamari on PlayStation 2 is one of those like that. Same thing happened. It was like 9, 9 p.m. I looked at the clock. It's 2 a.m. Like, oh shit, I gotta go sleep now. <laughs> it's like, okay. And that's the thing about it. And good news, though, with Streets of Rage, all of them, is that Sega finally is not ashamed of this franchise anymore like they were in the 2000s. So this is imported a bunch of places. There are collections on the modern systems that have this. If you have an Xbox One, Series S, Series X or Xbox 360, that SVC Streets of Rage collection has all three. It is $10. It is $10 download. That is the best version of this game you can get if you can, or the best collection you can get that has as far as the port jobs, but it's on everything, basically. As I said, there's a bad version on the Dreamcast, but it's on the Dreamcast, we're going to play it there. It's on Sega Genesis, where the cartridge is about 30 40 bucks, I think. A bit much, but honestly, this is a game I'd pay 64 I'd pay more than that. This game is awesome. This is... One of my favorite games on the Sega Genesis. It is terrific. I cannot say highly enough about this game. There's also collections on Pine in Japan on the PS2 and the GameCube in uh, Sonic's Ge Sonic Gems collection. Uh, we got screwed for that, so yeah, don't uh, do that for the US as far as picking up that way. Expect to find it. But as I said, uh, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series S, Series X, Switch, PC. Sega Genesis, there's even Game Gear and Sega Master System versions, and 3DS has a version while you can get it, uh, the 3D Streets of Rage edition. However you play this, except Dreamcast, fine, it's horrible on Dreamcast as far as the port, but the game's still great. Regardless, this is a fantastic game, I cannot recommend it enough. I'm a little late with this, jokingly, but about Mr. X, I didn't realize that this was really Mega Man X, or this is Mega Man 6 in disguise. Dr. Wild must have mailed his disguise. Yeah, I will also, you know what, I'll... Tell you what I'll do. I'm trying to think about this. I will, you know, I'll put a picture. I'll, you know, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will put a picture. I'll let the, uh, I'll let the demo play, because I'll play the demo and we'll go back to the intro for the story. Uh, when that comes up, I will. When I edit this, I will put a picture of Mr. X for Mega Man Six for NES. Which, act, thank you for pointing out. I did not know that actually. And uh, actually, interestingly enough, maybe they got the idea from this game because actually, Mega Man Six came out. Uh, the... Oh, okay, fine. In Japan, it came out the same year as this. In the U.S., it came out two years after this. Because, uh, Mega Man 6 was 1993 for Japan, 1994 for the U.S. So, I don't know. Maybe Capcom was looking at that. Because here's the thing. Capcom and Sega were looking at each other for Final Fight and Streets of Rage. Because, as mentioned, there's enemies in here and things with this that are indicated from Streets of... Or from, uh, Final Fight, which was Capcom's beat-em-up franchise. And then, clearly, with uh, a lot of the Final Fight games, 
Capcom was paying attention to uh, to uh, Streets of Rage, and we're going to show that for sure. And here's a link as far as Mr. X. Thank you, Nocturne. That'll also go on the link list, uh, and you know the drill with that. Anything chat provides me, as far as uh, links, they're going to go on the link list below as an easy reference also for the edit. Thank you very much. And yeah, so we'll probably see the edit about here. I'll make sure that the picture is not going to, you know, block the face of, uh, there's Mr. X this game, and then there's Mr. X for Mega Man 6, which is interesting. So yeah, there he is. He has his hands on the city, or he had his hands on the city, and we uh, took him off. Very interesting to that, and also an interesting thing, but as I said, that's kind of the element of Sega and Capcom paying attention to each other as far as, well, fine, as far as these beat-em-ups, but who knows, maybe with Mag maybe with Streets of Rage, maybe they're paying attention to that. If, if I can find an answer, if there is, uh, I will uh, indicate that, but, um, nice observation, that's the other thing. Chat, come up with observations, love that element, we can go into that, it is cool. Okay, so, next time we come back to Streets of Rage, by the way, just to indicate this, you know what, I'll tell you, we're gonna end on... I'm trying to think as far as the music. We're gonna end on the options menu. I'm gonna start playing a piece of music. Let's think about it. Go straight. There are actually two versions of Go Straight, by the way. Actually, there's two versions of a bunch of pieces of music in this, because actually they have the slower versions that were in the European versions, which somehow sometimes sound really good. And also there are unused tracks that actually were then put into Streets of Rage 4, specifically a Little Money Avenue, which I believe was in the beta of this game. And then there was also another one that was called... I thought I had it written down. Uh, let's see, hang on here. Uh, Working Bottom, I believe, is the name of the other track. They're two from, um... From, uh, um... Motohiro Kawashima, who did do a couple tracks in this game. They were not used in this, but then... They, I believe they put both of them in Streets of Rage 4. So yeah, the people who made Switch Rage 4 were big fans. All right, fine, I want to find... Yeah, there's the bar. That's the jungle. Oh yeah, the boat for, um... Oh, what was it? A uh, slow moon. Spin the bridge. That was, uh... Uh, alien power. Actually, wait a minute, this is the, uh... Right, this is one of the unused pieces of music, right. Okay, well, as I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the link list for every piece of music in the soundtrack anyway, which will include all the stuff. But I want to... I want to see what... Okay, I want to enter Dreamer. Of all the... There are a lot of great pieces of music in this soundtrack. There's not a bad piece of music in the soundtrack uh, at all. Even the ones I'm, like, kind of okay on... I mean, I think Spin of the Bridge is okay, but even then, it's like, I can't say it's a bad piece of music. It's a good piece of music, but yeah. There's some great ones in that. Yeah, Dreamer. I love Dreamer. We're gonna end on Dreamer. Okay, so that's gonna do it for Super Bowl Game Saturday for tonight. Next time we come back to Streets of Rage, it will be with the Medics uh, for Streets of Rage 3. We are going to use that SVC Streets of Rage collection to play it. For sure. The Classic Mega Man... Classic Mega Man may be my second least favorite series in the franchise, but that being said, I still know a lot about it. Which makes sense, I guess, because it's the uh, this one started. Star Wars is the only Mega Man series I didn't bother with much. And for our show, I think we're going into that. We do more stuff with Classic Mega Man. Uh, Star Force's question, because that's on DS, and I don't have... I gotta figure what I'm gonna do as far as getting a capture thing for DS, just because... Or 3DS, so I could show stuff for DS, because stuff I would like to show. In the meantime, I have stuff on Wii U's Virtual Console to show. All the Star Force games are on DS, so I don't have an easy way to show that. Although, I'd be curious to see what they're like. It's, I mean, who knows when that... Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection comes out next year. It might be the case that then they'll go to that one next. And then maybe go to also to Mega Man Legends as well. Get a release of that stuff going on. So, I mean, we'll see that. I mean, because that's coming out next year. We're getting closer to that uh, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. Which actually does uh, go back to one thing we had when we saw Sonic Mania. The reason, by the way, I didn't realize this until I did the edit. But, um, the reason they're going to have the online trading and battling is actually because those are not ports of the Game Boy Advance games. They basically rebuilt them from scratch, but from what, I'm, what we've seen, they look like they're basically one-to-one. -one. So it's not a case of, oh, wait a minute, they rebuilt it, and it's not the same. Or it's not a remake. So it's like, no, they're the same games, they're taking what they are, but they're not necessarily emulating them from the, from the, uh, I guess from the advance. I guess they might not have the source code to it, specific. But I guess that'll be the idea, and we'll have more stuff, more stuff going on Mega Man as it comes to our schedule, but 
uh, before we get to that schedule, next time we come back to Streets of Rage 3, it will be with, um, or no, it'll be Streets of Rage 3, it's gonna be playing, sorry. I probably try, try a Star Force collection, they made one, at least try the second and third, because I've only played the first one, I heard the other two are a good bit better. Yeah, I haven't played any of them, so at that point I'd be curious. And I don't know if those games go for a lot of money on DS, uh, in case they do, I'd be curious to know, just the time being, but yeah, we can definitely figure stuff with that. We'll figure as far as DS, but we'll get to, as we go. Next time we hit Streets of Rage is going to be with 3. Max to be in on that with the SPC Streets of Rage collection. Looking forward to doing that eventually. But yeah, it'll be a next year thing. For sure. Hmm. Next beat em up we're going to have, though, is going to be in five weeks because, on a like versus uh, indication, he said, I want to see all the Final Fight games. Or see more Final Fight games. We played Final Fight 1. He said, What's to get the other? I want to see the other ones. So I went on to Virtual Console. Before they said they were shutting down, I got two, three, and Mighty Final Fight. So, uh, yeah, we've been going back and forth. So we did, actually back in January, we did uh, uh, Final Fight 2. Uh, in five weeks, we were doing Final Fight 3 for Super Nintendo. So we're going back and forth with that, and then afterwards we'll do Streets of Rage 3. And I guess we'll do Mighty Final Fight, and then Streets of Rage 4. And then I guess we'll do Final Fight Streetwise, I guess. Talking about uh, games and franchise that are not good... I'm gonna assume those Star Force games are way better than this Final Fight Streetwise is supposed to be. As far as Star Force, any of them can be pricey, especially the third one. Okay, so they are expensive. I mean, that's a weird thing. I don't necessarily know, like, what's the really expensive stuff on DS. I mean, that's an- Oh, okay. Actually, I know one, surprisingly. I'm talking to Okami before. They made a sequel, Okami Den. I, like an idiot, didn't buy it, and it's like a $90 game now. I'd love to play it, because I loved Okami itself. There's another one that I just telling people play this it's awesome but uh yeah absolutely thank you for indicating that nocturne thank you by the way to everybody in chat to uh nocturne to like finn like verse has 22 everybody out there in chat land and youtube land and twitch land thank you so much for watching the show tonight for streets reach 2 and uh yeah bottom line you can play streets reach 2 please it is awesome it is terrific and it's readily available and it's not expensive in a lot of the versions you can get that svc collection on ps3 or any xbox starting with and 360 and up to every other one uh, that's the way to go. You get all three games in it for 10 bucks, And the Japanese versions as well. And they report it perfectly. Okay, let's talk schedule then. Uh, next week, talking Capcom. Uh, we've been talking Capcom a bit. Mm. We have a Capcom game uh, next week. It's also going to be the 30th anniversary celebration of a game on basically the day of its release. Because, yeah, next week is November 19th. By the time we start the show, it'll be November 20th in Japan. On that day in 1992, saw the release of The Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse for Super Nintendo. Well, I first wanted to see it. We're going to be playing that. I am looking forward to going through that. Having our Mickey Mouse case we had with uh, Castle of Illusion two years ago. We celebrated its 30th anniversary to the day as well. It's only fair we do with Nintendo and Capcom's game. It is a good one. And it's one that I'm definitely going to have a lot of fun playing and uh, going through the viewer quest as far as uh, November is concerned. I'll be here on Twitch at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next Saturday. Uh, the week after that is Thanksgiving weekend, so you know what that means. It is our annual showcase program. We have our third annual one this time. It's going to be with uh, racing games on the Dreamcast. I have 20 for you. Games that people have asked for, games people have wanted to see or said that, hey, where are these? I'd like to see them. More Dreamcast representation. That's the case. Doctor said she wanted to see Star Wars Episode Racer. We got that. Um, Dolly Finn said she wanted to see this whole idea. We got that. I got some really interesting stuff in there, for sure. A lot of uh, stuff of uh, Sega and a lot of other companies. Uh, the Crusader 64 gave me one to show, which is actually one of the most expensive games, which is San Francisco Rush 2049. We got a lot of big ones there, going across a good range. Thank you very much. And uh, that last game, you're not going to miss what that is. That I got stories on that, and uh, that is interesting. I'm holding my uh, cards the best on that one, but you're not going to want to miss it. That's in two weeks, because uh, that's what we do every Thanksgiving. We play... A group of games either in a genre or maybe we'll swap out on the compilation show which I do uh, Memorial Day weekend the only reason I'm saying this because I know I've been tossing this around I know like versus said certain things they want to see um, uh, like the listed games or certain games I mentioned they're delisted on Xbox 360 I want to do like a night of that but I don't know if I should be waiting till next year to do that or next November I'll figure that specifically. I can't wait for San Francisco Rush. All right, so uh, Dolly Finn, you're a fan of San Francisco Rush. I love my San Francisco Rush as well. And the 2049 game is awesome. And the Dreamcast version is the best way to play it. But I will also, um, 
as was the case tonight, and we've done that as well. We will go into where some of these games are also available. Because here's the other thing is that I, I see this as two things. Uh, yes, that's what I thought I was saying. Okay, no problem. I see this uh, showcase shows a couple things. Answer your question about a genre. Answer your question maybe about a console as far as representation of it that way. And then also giving a little bit of a gift guide when you really think about it for retro gamers in your life, including the idea that some of these are on modern systems. Not all of them. Actually, uh, San Francisco Rush 2049 is not necessarily on modern systems. But that being said, I will point out where they are available so you can get a sense of, hey, if you want to play this game for yourself. There are a lot of uh, different cases of that. And we got 20 of them for you in two weeks. Three weeks from now, uh, the Crusader 64 is going to be back on the show for Part 3 of Shadow Hearts for PlayStation 2. Him and I have been having a blast with this game so far. He's been showing me this game completely blind to me. He loves it. And he's grown up with it. I've never seen a lot he's showing. He's just loving my reactions. I'm loving what I'm seeing. It's a game that goes for about $150 as far as a copy nowadays. We're basically, I guess, begging for a re-release or a remake or something, some way to get it out modern. But also, in the case of me looking at that, saying, like, I'd pay 150 bucks for this game. It's looking that good. And uh, next time, we're going to play up until what he calls intermission. So at that point, at the end of the year, we will be at the halfway point of the game. And we'll continue that on in the new year, for sure. And I'm looking forward to doing that, for sure. And the week after that, uh, December 10th, Nocturne in the chat. She's going to be on for Mega Man X4 for the PlayStation. Uh, both versions, Japanese and the uh, U.S. version. Uh, she'll be playing the Japanese version with Zero. I will be playing the English version with X. I'll do my practice for that game here, actually, using probably the Mega Man X collection on PlayStation 2, because that is the version I have that is closest to the form factor we're going to run. But as far as how we're running, PS1 all the way, baby, on all those. Uh, thank you, Dog Turn, by the way, for that, and for everything you and everybody in chat, Dolly Finn and Kazza 22 and Electrus provide tonight. It has been a wonderful time. It's why I love doing the show every week, and why everything you have on Doc, there's something like. Uh, the Crusader 64 joked last week saying, you're gonna be, you're, uh, booked up for six years. Like, yeah, he's not wrong. It's like, anything you want to see, we're gonna make happen. We'll make it happen. Don't worry. I do not plan to stop doing the show, uh, for sure. Uh, the week after, uh, you and I do, uh, Mega Man X4 Nocturne, uh, we're going to Capcom again. So actually, uh, getting a couple of Capcom games going. It'll be Final Fight 3 for the Super Nintendo. That will be actually, uh, realizing this. It's going to be... I'm going to have a lot of you requests for December, honestly. It's a lot of fun when I'm able to watch your show. I wish you could join more often. I'm glad you were able to... I'm glad you enjoy it, Nocturne, for sure. I'm glad you have added so much to it, because, hey, you were the trailblazer for the show. You started as far as guest on the program. That was one part of it, as far as being on the show. That started that. That's fine for that. I'm glad you are able to join for this, but, of course, remember, we do have all the show's archives. So if you missed a show, it's like, hey, there's a game we played, something you want to see as far as something... I think you'd like Shadow Hearts. I know it's a game that costs a lot of money, but if you've not seen our play of Shadow Hearts so far, the parts we've done, the Crusader 64 and I, I think you'd really like that. We got a lot of stuff on the YouTube site as well. We're keeping that for the purpose of that. Like, hey, you can't make the show? We get it. I understand that for sure. We love when you're here, for sure, as far as you, Nocturne, you, Dolly Finn, you, Cousin22, you, uh, Black First, and everybody else who's been in chat or on show. Love that for sure. But we'll always have it. This show will keep going. It's not stopping. But just because you're not going to be here doesn't mean you missed it. That's why I archive. People said, hey, I can't be on the show or be on the show all the time or see the show all the time or I want to watch it later. That's what we do. it. So I appreciate that. And Nocturne, you've added to this one for sure a lot, along with all the ones you've been in. And that's been the case with everybody, Jen. That's the idea. This is a collaborative show. So it's not going to be that case of, you know, just one element. It's not my show. It's fun. And that's the other thing. And I want to make this fun. I don't want to also be in a case of I'm, you know, sitting here and just explain this game to you so like, look, I'm right about all this stuff, or look, I'm uh, standing on the mountaintop telling you how great this is every peon down, like, no, I don't ever want to get into a case that's ever going to be like that. I want you to have a fun time, I want to get this element, as if we've gone through a lot of things, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, the idea that there are people who've had a lot of losses, as far, like, everybody has losses usually if it comes to anything as far as any time we play something, especially this week, we mentioned the Kevin Conroy thing, I mentioned someone I know, her brother died really suddenly, like, yeah, you know, look, this is not going to be something that's going to change the world that way. But it's like a little bit of escapism, but also something like, hey, we'll deal with some of this stuff for sure. We'll have fun that way. It'll be, it's really a human element as far as that. And I'm like, look, it's not, it's not just me coming up with this saying that, oh, I did this. Oh, I'm this great person for making this happen. All of you did it. I would not have had this if chat didn't come in and say, I want to tell a personal story. I want to get an element to that. 
Yes, it is for me, as far as that element of a, I guess, a stress element specific. I guess it's not even that way. I'm, I'm glad you do that, and thank you for making it that way, as far as your appearances on the show, your appearances in the chat, all of that. I said, that's what I've always said. I always say this is your show as much as it's mine. That's why. In a lot of ways, I didn't know that this is what the show was going to become. Well, I just started doing this because I wasn't seeing people about two and a half years ago, but that's where we're at, and I, it's really become this great thing, and I, that's why I love doing it. I'll keep doing it. By any time you say a game, you want to see? It's like, let's do it. No problem. And speaking of other games we're going to do, um, yeah, next month is going to be a bunch of viewer requests. I guess Shadow of Sword is going to count. Mega Man X4 is going to count. Um, Final Fight 3 is going to count. We got to Final Fight 3. By the way, Final Fight 3. That's going to be the last Saturday program of the year. We're doing Friday shows for the last two weeks. So that's going to be on um, December 23rd and December 30th. December 23rd, we are playing another viewer request. Uh, that's going to be from Electverse. He wanted to see... Tetris Plus for the Sega Saturn. We are going to run that version. It's also on the PlayStation. There is a Game Boy version. And it is also... Uh, it was an arcade game. We're playing that one. Plenty of people already have one-sided streams, for sure. So it's more fun when people involved... Watching or involved, too. It's being someone watching is someone who's joined you on several shows. I'm glad to that, for sure. And I think Dogfin's like, yes, well said. Uh, well, that's the other thing, as well. Because, like, look, that's how I'm kind of standing out, I guess. As far as what it is. And, honestly... All of you made this happen. I mean, I wouldn't have thought that this was it, but then I realized, okay, when I wasn't seeing people, what was I missing? I was saying, like, I'm seeing, like, my coworkers in Nocturne You and Dogfin You as well, and other people as well. I was saying, like, what was that? What was, why was I missing? Like, look, I was, like, playing games or seeing, or showing games or things like that, or vice versa. They were showing me things. What was the missing part of that? The missing part of that was that communal element. I didn't really realize at the time. It was kind of a sense of, what is this? Let me find out. Let me kind of go along with this. And that's what it became. And this is kind of, I guess, the element of that is, is that I can see people now. So at that point, it kind of came full circle. Now this is what the show became. I said, this is kind of something, as I said, I just love doing this. And I'll keep doing it, for sure. At the end of the of December, as I said, Tetris Plus and Super Nintendo on the 23rd. The 30th, the last show of the year, is going to be Rabbit the Rapper on the PlayStation. I'm using the PS2 for that, otherwise the uh, button lag is going to be bad. It's going to be probably maybe off anyway, because that is a difficult game as far as it, but... You want to talk about your uh, escapist element, your idea of, you know, being, you know, involved in something emotionally connected in a weird way with Parabola the Rapper. Also seeing, like, how weird this game is if you haven't seen Parabola the Rapper, but also this great sense of insp being inspired. It's one of the most inspirational games I think I've ever played. It's also one that costs a lot of money now. It's like, it ballooned up in price to like $160 if you're going for it on the PlayStation 1. And the PS3 version is useless because it's downloadable on that for uh, 10 bucks, but the lag is going to be a problem and they don't adjust for it. It's on PSP, which is like 60 and it's, uh, it's on PS4. That's probably your best way to play it. But, um, show this last game of the year in January. A uh, quick uh, run rundown of January. First weekend of the year is going to be Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. I started that two years ago. I never finished it. We're finishing it. We're going to start finishing it anyway. It's going to be a two-part game. We'll uh, finish that in February. Then the week after that is going to be the Crusader 64, four part four of Shadow Hearts. And then on uh, January 20th, that's going to be Friday program. This is also we're adjusting because I have guests who want to come on. They can only do Friday. It's going to be Edwack and Nikki. They're going to be playing, or he's going to be playing Guitaru Man on the PlayStation 2. Another one costs a lot of money. And another one that he adores. And hey, fully debuting on show as far as him. He's, he was on uh, part two of uh, First and Eve. But fully debuting with music game. An underrated one. So I'm looking forward to being involved with that one. And in the month, uh, Max is going to be back with uh, First and Eve. We're going to finish it, I think. Just have to be careful about the Chrysler building again. That is the hardest part of the game. So we're going to be doing our map writing as far as that. And I will be building up uh, Iabrea so that we'll be set to be doing that at the end of January. Then we get further in the year, and uh, Nocturne, uh, you and I, when we do uh, Mega Man X4, we'll talk about some of the other things you want to do. I know you want to do Mega Man Legends 2. I don't know if you want to do that after Mega Man X4. We can definitely figure the scheduling out for that, because I have a little bit of a preliminary thing, but I can shuffle stuff around based upon what people want to be involved in. I know Nikki wants to do Freddy Fish, so we've got to figure the schedule on that, and we will definitely will, and I'm looking forward to all that and all the shows we're going to be doing. All right, so with that, thank you so much. Yeah, so start Mega Man Legends 2 next year. Okay, as I said, we will uh, go over that. We might have something to announce then to uh, everybody else in uh, four weeks. Because, yeah, it's four weeks we're doing uh, Mega Man X4. Looking forward to that. And looking forward to every other show we got. Good night, everyone. Dolly Finn says, uh, good night to you. Thank you so much for watching Super Bowl Game Saturday. Thank you so much, everybody, for adding so much to this program. 
every week. I appreciate it so much. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. It was a great show. Well, yeah, you're welcome, and thank you also for making it a great show. As I always say, I couldn't do this without all of you. I couldn't do this without everybody in there. Even if you're just watching the show and not saying anything, that's fine. You're still adding to it. Good night. I had a lot of fun. No problem, Nocturne. Glad you did. I will keep uh, bringing that fun to you, and you're obviously all going to keep bringing the fun to me that way. That's the other thing. It's as much fun to me just with this experience as it is for you watching. I'm glad that's working that way. I'm glad you're enjoying what the show is. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your night, a wonderful rest of your weekend, and a great week coming forward. I will see you next Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse. Until then, keeping awesome. Have a great rest of your week and night. I'll see you next week. Thank you again for everything, and take care.